Wade on here. Okay, back uh, with another live stream, and uh, or not live stream, I mean. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to go back to work on the uh, Net Pro Max and um, take up where I left off. I uh, let's see, let's get on the desktop here, and uh, I've got the I'm logged in on the remote desktop to the Net Pro Max, the Fedora 29 server, and uh, I rebooted everything, you know, when I took my little break and I had a little snack too, but I didn't think that actually worked, but for, <laughs> I thought, let's see, uh, you know, I had put this in my clipboard, this uh, name of the uh, VM Linux, 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 Linux <laughs> uh, file, and uh, it's still there. So I put it in here and search, got nothing. Uh, that's probably not going to be named. It's, it, when you get a kernel update, it's when you look see kernels in here, it says kernel. So I thought I would change it to kernel, but let's see. Yeah, let's do that. Because if I just do a description, well, we could try it. Let's look in the descriptions, I guess. I don't think it'll find anything whatsoever. And if you just do the numbers, then you're just going to get uh, <clears throat> a lot of stuff, everything that pertains to that, you know. Let's try kernel. I don't know if that's going to be right either. That's so exact, you know, it may not work. Okay, let's try in names. I don't guess it's finished searching yet. <clears throat> okay. That is a name, so... Yeah. Okay, the only other thing I can see to do is maybe try just the numbers. Finding it may be harder than I thought. Yeah, see, just the numbers doesn't find anything either. Um, try one more time. Let's see. But I don't think... I'm a little bit worried that even if... Uh, oh, names. File. I thought I was searching file names. What the heck is the point in that? Names, descriptions, summaries, file names. Why do you have names and file names? Uh, I guess I see why. But you got the f actual file name is in these apps. You know, Linux apps are not very often the same as the name. Like I guess that's the name, and then the file name's not even in here. Well, yeah, it might be somewhere. No, it's not. Sometimes I think it is, but uh, anyway, okay. Let's see what happens if we do file names. Nothing. Uh, let's get rid of that and put the BM Linus. Linus. I don't know why it has a Z instead of um, X. I'm sure it makes sense to the programmers, <coughs> but uh, doesn't do anything. Let's try kernel in front of that. K R N E L. I see kernel up. Oh, you know kernels in there all the time, so I know they're there um, so I don't I don't know how I could possibly find it now after all those searches uh, I guess I could just say kernel and uh, oh I could try space in there no that wouldn't work oh yeah hidden enter doesn't search anyway okay I just kernel and then see if we can find K R N E L. I don't see why we're not finding anything whatsoever here. Maybe there's something not working right. This is on. Oh, I'm searching on the. Uh, oh, it's still searching. On the. Uh, <coughs> on the. Fedora 29 server on that Pro Max. You should find something when you search for kernel. K R N E L. Yeah. Okay. I ain't finding nothing. Well, now there's probably not anything that's found. Oh, there we go. Just taking longer than I thought. Kernel core, kernel modules, and kernel modules extra. That's all that came up in file names. Okay. Uh, try descriptions now. Should find quite a bit. <clears throat> 
There's not a little activity deal here to show you whether or not it's working or not anymore. There used to be, I think. There used to be some way you could tell. I know there was something in the window. So it just becomes very aggravating. I wish they'd put something in there. Doesn't have to be some big, I don't want some big obnoxious thing. I think I used to grow up about the one they had because it was obnoxious to watch. <laughs> can't, you just can't ever satisfy me. <laughs> But uh, let's see, is it done? That's the only way I can tell is try to do try to change that, and if it won't let you change it, it's still working. <clears throat> I guess it's not done yet. Nope. Kernel core. Kernel package contains Linux kernel V-M-L-I-N-U-Z. I guess that's what the name of the... Uh, oh, so that's the kernels. V-I-M-L-I-N-U-Z. Okay, I couldn't remember. Core of any operating system. The kernel handles the basic functions of operation system, memory, allocation, process, allocation, device input and output, etc. Yeah, now we're getting stuff. And see the remote desktop's not refreshing as fast as it's coming in there. But we've already got the newest kernel. It already works. And that's the thing. I, I'm actually afraid that if I found it and I install it, it might make it the default kernel. And I don't want that. I want the new one. I don't want to jack anything up. So, uh, well, oh, the reason I was actually looking for it, I thought if I could find it, this particular kernel that I know is missing half of it, uh, that was in the last video, then I could um, un try and uninstall it. So while that's uh, working this little heart out, yeah, I still got, I can open up Thunor. File manager as root user. That's why I'm opening it that way in the terminal so I can open it as root user because I'm, I'm, lo I'm logged in as Dawn now, not root. And uh, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> File system root. Let's just see what this, this difference is here. Is that going to be follow up root user or what? Same thing. Okay, so boot. Uh, and here we are. Now, I can't read that stuff in that format. Let's get a view. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't shown it. There might be hidden files. Let's go ahead and turn that on and see. Well, first, we'll look for it. Okay, so... The v, VM Linux that are all there. There's three of them. And whichever one I'm just now searching for, I've already forgot. Let's see if we can see that. I think it's uh, seven. No, I'm not searching. For, oh, I'm just searching for kernel. It's done now. Okay, so we'll come back. Yeah, see, there's a bunch of kernels, but we'll come back in a second here. So <clears throat> the one that's not, uh, okay, now it's 4.19.7. See, I've got 4.19.6, 7, and 15. And 4.19.7 has a system map file, but it doesn't have an INET frames file. INET, INET RAM FS. I, I always do that. Uh, but anyway, INET RAM FS. It has a config file. So it's only, but still, I don't know what else might be missing. I, I, what had happened, uh, I had shut down the system during the middle of a kernel uh, updates, and I didn't realize that's what was going on. I knew that there was some program running, but I couldn't find, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, I think that, that little icon was up there, and I just was still tired. I didn't think to look, didn't think about it, you know, that night. And um, so anyway, that um, that's what we're missing. And you could just delete these files, but I, I want, if there's any configuration in the system, I want it taken out. You know, that could be even, uh, it, could be de it could be even worse to delete them. Best thing to do, I guess, if I can't find a way to do it with like DNF, is to leave it alone and wait because after two two more kernel updates, it'll be gone anyway. It'll be taken out automatically. So uh, yeah, that's what I'll that's what I'll do. I just don't like it being there broken. And since Fedora 29 is getting a lot of updates, it it's going to get updates pretty soon. Oh, and while I'm looking, I was curious. While I was talking about the kernel files. Okay, now here are this is Fedora 28. Now, so what I have in Fedora 28 is actually, uh, I think, newer, 14, 15, and 16. 
Um, oh, what was the other one? Uh, I think now yeah, I've already forgot, but that's what's in here, and uh, and it's four dot nineteen. Let's see. Um, where can I put this? Well, let's just search. I don't think the same thing is in there. I'm going to search. Oh, it's not pasting in there. Oh, it's not working. When you when you put something in the clipboard on the oh, that's why it worked because I put it in the clipboard on the other machine. It wasn't. If you put something in the clipboard on this machine, you can go paste it into that other machine. But if you put it, I didn't remember that. If you put it in the clipboard on the other machine, you can't come and paste it in this machine. Dang it. Because uh, it's still in there. But uh, anyway, this is what I have. <clears throat> um, I've got 419, 14, 15, and 16. And um, oh, there's some files that I didn't see over there. And then there's config and then INET RAM FS. And it has its 14, 15, and 16. I also have MIM test. Elf MIM, well, I think that's just a type of file. But I have MIM test x86 on there too. So I could boot into a memory test if I, if I need, wanted to or needed to. I didn't install that on this. I could, but I just, you know, didn't. it didn't come stock. <laughs> but uh, I got that, I'm sure, with some of those group installs I did. But uh, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, so there's the difference. But this is FC28, not FC29. It's 64-bit. But So um, I, kn I just thought I'd sh show that to, you know, kind of demonstrate for sure that's what's missing. You know, there is something missing there. Okay, now, I think I was already on that kernel core. There used to be a way to sort these things like, uh, avail well, I think maybe you can still do that. Yeah, available or installed and all that. But uh, now there's so much, it's pretty hard to, let's get this full screen then maybe. Yeah, now I can see the bar. It takes so long, though. If you change this up here, it takes forever to read load, so I'm not going to do it. Let's see. If you're in here somewhere, I don't want to be on. I don't want to change anything. You start typing, usually it'll start searching. Maybe I have to click to get it to do that. Yeah, there we go. Now, what I was thinking, while I got that little thing up, I'll try that. Okay, that didn't do anything. Didn't find anything. What I was thinking is, get, yeah, let's get rid of that and see. No. <clears throat> Used to, anything that had kernel in the beginning, CDEFG, let's see. H I J K. Anything that had kernel in the beginning would uh, have the, you know, see it just says kernel. It doesn't say, oh, I know why. Because used to the version was right there. Now it's down here. So whatever my, I'll just paste this in here just so I can read it. Yeah, four nineteen seven three hundred. That seems to be older than the ones that's in my Fedora twenty eight system. Is what I was thinking in my head, but. Maybe not. 7300. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. 419, 7300. See, it shows to be installed. Okay. There's something that needs to be updated. I think that's a kernel update. That's an update that hasn't been, you know, I haven't run the updates yet. So, um, I don't know. But anyway, it's installed now. I can uninstall it, is what I was thinking. 419.7.6. Let's see what we got. 15, 16, and 7. Isn't that what we saw? I already got out of there. I was just getting out of it to not run this, uh, make the system work too hard. That's why I keep closing the apps. Normally I leave them open until I'm sure I'm done with them. <clears throat> so. Okay, and again. I need to really need to set that defaults the way I like them. Okay. So I got 419, 6, 7, and 15. 
And the missing thing is six. Yeah, I've got six and 15 of the INET RAM FS, and that's it. And then I have, well, I have the rescue one. See, there's a rescue. I guess that's a rescue kernel as well. <clears throat> yeah, it is, I guess, because v, VM Linux. Okay, so what I'm missing is the seven uh, INET RAM FS. So what I was thinking is if I uninstalled that kernel, then um, then I would get rid of that problem. And then I could try to reinstall it, but I probably wouldn't because I'd be afraid again that it might take over as the newest one or something. And But now that I see there may be a kernel update, I'm thinking maybe I ought to just run those updates and see. Yeah, it's a kernel update. So really running, oh, huh. I wonder, I don't think that would help. If I uninstalled this broken one, here's what's going to happen. This is why I'm doing all this. When this new kernel gets installed, that's going to drop off my only my only other working kernel. It'll be automatically dropped off. And so this broken one will be there, and then the one I'm running on right now, and then the new one. So I'll still have, well, I'll still have two kernels, so. thinking that maybe I do want to try to uninstall that. <clears throat> because if I uninstall that, it might, the system might go back, like I can recheck for updates and the system might go back and see that it's missing and redo it. And also install the new kernel, the new very, even next one up. So it would be 419.7300 that I'd, yeah, missing stuff in. All right, so let's go back over there. Four nineteen seven three hundred. Okay. You got to click on that box over there to uninstall it. Four nineteen seven three hundred, because you can do installs and uninstalls. You know what? When updates are waiting to be done. Four nineteen seven. Yeah, now see it's gonna uninstall. I'm gonna do it. I don't think that's dangerous. And this since I have a new kernel waiting to be in I'm doing screenshots for myself here. Let me look in my stuff over here. Yeah, let me close the browser. It's just sitting there running. Yeah, I'm on the desktop. Audio seems to be working. So, now, back in here. <coughs> Hit apply. And we're only going to remove that one kernel. 419.7300. Okay, I think I've said that enough times to know that that's the right one. Okay. got to be careful with doing stuff like that. So let's look again. 4.19.7.300. 4.19.15 is the newer one. 4.19.6. And there is no INET RAM FS for 4.19.7. So that is the one I want to uninstall. Okay. I think that's going to be okay. Safe enough to do. Now we got to put our root password in again. I had to look at it. It went out of my head. Uh oh, did I get it wrong? <laughs> I think I messed up. I think I got it that time. <clears throat> you have to, you can't wait too long or it'll time out on you when it's waiting on you to do the uh, password. 
Now it kind of gives you a little stuff down there at the bottom that shows you what's going on. It's after a while anyway. I think it will. Oh, well. Maybe already be done. And uh, it's looked like it tried to search that again or something. I don't know what it really did. I think it's done though. I'm gonna search and actually I probably should have searched and well that's good. Descriptions. There we go. Yeah, it was done. I've I've, ne I've never seen drag or DNF do anything that quick before. And so while it's <clears throat> kind of getting to where we can see it, let's go see. We should have those fo files gone out of this folder over here now. No, it's not gone. Maybe you're going to have to reboot for it to happen. Well, let's uh, go back a folder and then go back in there. It may just need to refresh that folder in the file manager. No, nope, it's still there. I think, it, uh, I think kernel updates don't take effect till you reboot. Pretty sure about that. Four nineteen six, four nineteen fifteen, and no four nineteen seven. Yeah, that's just like it was. There we go. Now we're at kernels. Now it's probably right in there. It's really hard with the way this is laid out to see what you want to look at. And if I could get that to go smaller, it would help, but it still wouldn't do it. Now that one's the update. 419. Where did it go? There it is. 419.7. Yeah, it still shows to be installed, but DNF is, yeah, I think it's, it's still showing to be installed because it's not going to happen to you reboot. But there is updates here, though. There's another one to do with kernels, looks like. 420.23. Yeah. What's the other one? This one is 4.23. Oh, it's probably like more different parts of it. Okay, so I'm going to quit. And reboot it. Not do any of those updates until after I see what happens with the kernel. And when we reboot it, it should automatically update grub. And it shouldn't even be in there. We'll probably, we should just have two kernels in there. That's <coughs> what so should happen. Get out of that. Now. Still making, yeah, we're still making our video. Still the 10 inch tablet. Let's see if it looks, well, it's not behind now, so maybe you'll actually see what I'm talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing running, I already shut everything down via the remote desktop. Restart. <coughs> I think I will, uh, yeah, I'll try to catch it. I'll, I'll grab the Error, error, move the arrow key, arrow keys. So 
as it comes up so we can look at it or I can look at it. Okay, it's still there. Huh. Didn't take it out. I wonder if there was more than one entry of it in there. Like that other one. Looks like there was two entries of that other one. And I'm going to assume it's... Well, let's don't even click on it. I'm sure it's just not going to be on rope because I did that. Because I uninstalled. At least I don't think. We'll do it. Yeah, it's still broke. And you can't hit control on it. And the keyboard doesn't work, nothing happens. You have to hard shut down. Unknown block 00. That's what it gets down to. Kernel panic. Okay. Now I'll just let it log in or boot up like normal this time. Okay, so I'll try one more time because I, as I was looking to, at that, you know, what I noticed there was two listings there that were going to be installed for that kernel update. That's, that happens to be very helpful. I'd have never, I don't think I'd ever figured it out otherwise. So we'll let it do that. Now there may be another entry for that 419.7.300 kernel. So let's go see if there is, and we'll take, try taking it out. Uh, yeah, I would have thought that even if you have to reboot for it to take effect, that it would have showed as not there in DNF. That's what I remember when you, you, you know, if you, uh, I don't, uh, I don't install, uninstall very often. In kernels, maybe once I've ever done it. I don't know, twice or something. I don't, I don't know really. All these years too many years since fedora 5 but uh <clears throat> i remember having trouble with kernels here and there you know don't right now i can't think of what what might have been other than all i remember mostly is kernel update i was just reason proprietary video drivers because i wanted to have 3d support and all that now some of the open source drivers have 3D support, but I really don't use 3D. I don't. It's only really you know games and a few other things. 3D modeling or something, things that I don't know how to do. Okay, let's log in. Start X and that's a f just to find it. that's good enough for a server. I, you know, I was not liking not having the GUI login screen and the desktop switcher, um, but it's not really a big deal. Um, seems like Mate works great. It's not the machines are handling it fine, so they must have light lightened something up in Mate or. Uh, or, or the Fedora 29 server or both <clears throat> and so that's great <laughs> that'll make me want to just run the server one if that's what it is for everything <clears throat> I like this background but that blurry part makes me think something's wrong and it kind of it actually kind of does something that kinda, it's like my eyes feel like they kind of hurt when I look at it I really liked it until the more I see it the more I'm kind of like it bothers me <clears throat> Uh, that's kind of odd. I don't know. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, oh, let me get on the remote desktop. That's what I'm forgetting. Takes extra time to do all that, but it's definitely worth it. Still 29 updates. Okay. Now, wave again to see. It seems to be working good. So maybe you actually saw. Yeah, and I didn't see anything from behind. So I'm guessing that if I take, you know, that's why I had that 
that tablet just you just can't send that much data over its Wi-Fi chip uh, to have. Uh, it said 720p, otherwise it wouldn't fit my my settings here, my scenes. But I also the data, right? You know, uh, I mean my phones can do 1080 and so can this camera, but the camera is 8 megapixel and the phones are five, like I said. Anyway, um, okay, we're ready to go back over here. Now we got to go back into uh, DNF. <clears throat> now that will take while to get to where we can well maybe not yeah we have to wait you can try a search but then it won't work because it when it hasn't done listing everything that needs to, needs to list <clears throat> okay now back over here in this other window <clears throat> open up a terminal get root privileges and um, it's kind of nice working in root when you don't have to do all that when you're doing all this administrative stuff could have logged in as root. It really just didn't even. I didn't think about it. <clears throat> but um, all right. Now then. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, Flurnar finally doesn't. The com terminal doesn't get all. Things were cra uh, failing and crashing. There's still some errors, but uh, what would happen is once you closed Thunar, you couldn't type in the terminal again. It was kind of hung up. <clears throat> so now you can, you know, open and close Thunar or do other things. Nah, that's good. Uh, but since I am doing this over and over, and I'm probably still waiting on space icons side pane behavior looks like GVFS is not available and important features including trash support removal media Okay, should probably install that. Oh, view folders using last active view. No, view folders using detail. That's what I wanted. Okay. It doesn't work. It didn't. It didn't save the last active view, did it? Don't know why. Okay. Now. <clears throat> So um, I'll go ahead and go into the boot folder. <coughs> the boot folder is actually a boot partition. It's a partition on its own. <coughs> it shows up as a folder in the file manager, but it is a separate partition. Oh, yeah, I think you have to. That's probably something to do with the remote desktop that it doesn't work unless you click on the folder. Doesn't act like it's working at all. It's probably remote desktop. Yeah, it's, things are not working well. Okay. Um, oh, it's finally to where I can search. I cannot resist hitting the enter key. Because that's how I do it. Okay, let's get over here and see if anything happened on this other window. No, it didn't. Why it won't open up? There we go. Oh, look. Yeah, you can even see it. I didn't realize that. See, there it is. Uh, has its own little icon there. So I don't know why there's a file system and a file system root. They're, they shouldn't be separate. But, uh, yeah, 
300 and then still it's showing the same way 4196 and 15 is there but not 4197 okay we want to make sure we get rid of uninstall 49 everything to do with 4197 kernel core okay let's see it's probably going to be that one right there in the middle oh kernel core and kernel and see there's only two of the kernels so i bet i missed kernel core i'm on the wrong one but yeah i think i'm right 419.7. Okay. So we want to get rid of that one. That's why it didn't go away. Kernel core. I just didn't see it. I was going a little too hasty there. cross headers let's double check that I didn't mess up 419.7 now let's find the 419.7 up here I don't see it let's see what that other up here where it says kernel I don't know which one it would be, that one or that one, but let's try. Let's go to that one there just to see. That's 4.18.6, 4.19, 4.20. It's not showing uh, the 4.19.7 now. So, is there anything else to do with 4.19.7? Kernel modules. Oh, well, that should be okay, I think. I think. Well, there is something for 4.19.7 there. Whoops. There it is. Package providing commonly used kernel modules for the core kernel package. You know, I might be able to bring that in, at least temporarily. Yeah. 419.7. I don't know. I think I'm going to take them out because they might cause some kind of problem. I think it's better to take them out than to leave them in there. This gives me like a record of what I've been doing. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, see, that's what I mean about all the other things that might be attached to the, that uh, broken file there. Let's see if we can organize it by version and, you know, maybe find out a little. I don't know if that'll work or not. I may have just, uh, it could take forever to reorganize it, or I may have just. <clears throat> I think it's just taking a while to reorganize it. It's probably better to organize it by name anyway. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it took effect at all. Kernel modules extra, 419.7. There's another one. I don't think it let me reorganize it. That's what happened, I think. Kernel tools, there's only one of those. I think maybe we found them now. Gonna have to just look through everything, I guess, that's in this search results. Oh. 
Formula 4. Yeah, got deselected current 4.19.7. And then there is no 4.19.7 up there. I think it did get, that did get taken out. I don't know why it's not even there, though. That's what I don't get. Yeah, okay, so that's everything, as far as I can tell. Kind of look through again, I guess. 419.7 is going to be uninstalled, I believe. Let's see. No, you can't. Yeah, I can't see that way down there like that. Okay, now, well, let's just look through, looking for 4.19.7. That's going to be uninstalled, that one there. This is something that's hard for my eyes to do, but well. Okay, those are all different numbers, so that's not going to be the kernel packages. Okay, so I think I'm ready to do it. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. So let's hit apply. <clears throat> now we're going to do the core, the modules, and the modules extra. That's exactly what I remember clicking on. Okay. For the one time I'm, I, I've gotten my habit back into the habit of logging in as my regular user, and it really would have been really nice to be logged in as root, and I wouldn't have to keep typing in the password to do all this. But hopefully I'll get it. Now, see, now you're seeing it's removing and all that stuff. Because it's taking a little enough time be able to see the you know for it to generate a progress menu there so uh, I'm used to DNF doing things so slowly that I was shocked I thought it wasn't working a while ago when I did the other one 100% <coughs> there you go I don't know why they didn't get that little 100% bar the last time oh because it yeah it does like that it does it as for each file, but not like, okay, we're done, 100%, you know. Okay. Four nineteen, yeah. See, four nineteen seven still shows in there. Now, it is also a possibility that it. Uh, the uninstall is failing, but it should tell you, I would think. Let's see if it deleted the files from in there. Oh, I think it did. Yep. 419. Now it looks done. 419.15, 419 4.19.6. 4 4.19.15, 4.19.6. A whole lot less files in there. Now there's only those two kernels. Ah, this is what I was looking for. That's what I expected to see. So yeah, the first time it was, it was, I was right of what I expected to see, but I thought, oh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I was right, and so it's just uh, hard for me to remember everything. Okay, something's still running, so let's wait. I think I tried to close it before Thunar was finished shutting down. Now let's see. What's going on? I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt, but it might make me lose my settings. Thunor, warning, unable to connect to the iBus. That does it anytime you open up Thunor in this terminal like that. Okay, try one more time. I may go look in the... D 
didn't do that a while ago, so that's why I'm like, well, maybe we should wait. Let's go see if Thunar is still running in the background. We'll go look in the system resources. I'm re after breaking that kernel, because <laughs> it said, uh, well, that was an XFCE desktop, though, and it doesn't uh, give. Like, in, in May, it would say, you got updates running. Do you really want to shut down? Well, uh, XFCE just said, you have a program running. Do you really want to shut down? And now my um, system monitor didn't seem to want to open up. Maybe my uh, remote desktop is just not responding. Go ahead and close that app and then get back in it again here. Okay. Just want to make sure before I did, make sure I'm still showing my what I think I'm showing my desktop. Okay. 53. Sometimes that. Uh, fixes it pretty good and sometimes it doesn't make one bit of difference I didn't open that up yet okay let's go see if the if the terminal will close without giving an error this time hmm now it's starting it up I must just not have got a good click on it on the system resource app What is this? Server off. I think that's probably the remote desktops. It's using 67% of the CPU, 71. And then what's using 19? Task manager. It's using 19 to 23%, 7. Yeah, Thunar is not running. Well, I've got it mistyped, but it's not running. Okay, what's so I don't know what it is why something is server off okay well I'm not going to worry about what uh, what it might be well I guess I could have opened now let's open up the task manager and see if it's still running hard yeah that I think that is, I bet you anything that's B and C. Yeah. Tiger, no. Hmm. Remote? Oh, KRFB. KRFB, yeah, but that's not the thing using all the resources. That must be something to do with the server itself that's using all the resources. No, it's not going to the top. XORD VT1. Keep TTY auth home done server auth. Auth is all usually is authentication. So maybe it's got something to do with me typing in the password and all that when I was doing my updates. I don't know, but uh, I'm on, did I ever get on the camera? No, I'm still on remote desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of there. And I'm going to get on the camera and go ahead and go reboot the machine. <clears throat> Looks like I'm behind now. Yep, yeah, it's behind. <clears throat> so it doesn't last long. It's in slow motion. So it's not going to be... I just don't... For some reason that tablet just doesn't seem to be good for streaming. Maybe there's something about its... Uh... uh Wi Fi's, you know, module. Okay, restart. Because it's worse than the phones that are older and less powerful and everything. Eight core tablet with four gig of RAM can't do as well as a quad core with one gig of RAM. Just doesn't make no sense. 
Same app. IP webcam. It's a newer version of Android on the tablet, but that should actually work better, I would think. And since that that tablet's so much, you know, more powerful, it shouldn't have any trouble with the whatever version's on there. I don't know what version's on there, actually. I know it's newer. I know it supports OTG. <coughs> yep, now we just got two kernels and then the rescue kernel. Okay, so now I, I like that. Uh, don't like having a broken... Well, all things you don't want to have hanging around is a broken kernel, so... I think what I'll do now is run a check for updates and uh, go ahead and install those updates and see what we end up with. Maybe I was gonna thinking, well, do I want to do it under dawn or do it under root? It is more convenient to do it under root. There are some things that system get the the you know, security bill. I, I don't know if it's SE, not necessarily SE Linux, but let's go ahead and log in as root. I haven't been in there as root in a, uh, since earlier, so make sure it's all still working like it should. <clears throat> yeah, this, in a way that's kind of convenient because, you know, when I do want to, well, it depends, but like if I want to log into the server and do admin work, I could just log in as root. If I want to log in to use it to browse the web and look up things, then I can log in as Dawn. So that's actually pretty cool. That it's pretty simple to do that. Okay. When it gets up, when that uh, updater comes up, then I think that's what I'll do is click on it. It should come up in a minute. I don't have a desktop background. Huh. That's weird. Unless it just hasn't come up yet. I'll go ahead and... Oh, it just hasn't come up yet. That's all. Yeah, it's just not done loading. There we go. Yeah, it's all good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to turn on KRFB. Yeah, the oops is a lot. <clears> there <throat> probably is an oops, but it's, it's not work. It's the report's not working. Okay. Oh man, it's way behind. You're still seeing the boot screen, uh, the uh, a Zeus model number there. That's just really getting aggravating. Well, there's no point in using the tablet anymore. I'll be down a camera, but what I'll, I'll just have to uh, okay, desktop, get the remote desktop app up and running. What I'll have to do is go to work and I'll go set up OBS so that. Uh, I, I, well, I can use camera one as my audio, and uh, camera two will be my, what I was used to do is put have it be the camera behind me pointing at the monitor, and then at the beginning of the video, if I want to say hello and show my pretty face, I can just turn my chair all the way around it. It's not a very good angle, but it's, you know, it'll work. I've done it before. <coughs> but uh, that's what I'll do, because the tablet just flat won't, doesn't work. And if I'm using it, nobody else can use it. And I'm in here for hours, you know, so. Never know when somebody might be wishing they could use it. So, um, okay. Now the updater's up. I'm in as root. Let's open the file manager just so I can get myself oriented and see that it show. It should open up to the root folder. 
And so if I uh, went to file system. Oh, yeah, I was in Thunar. That's why things look different. I was like, why? Things look different. Boot. I always click. I generally always click kind of on the word, not on the folder. And so that doesn't work in, in this. I think it's really because of the uh, oddities of the remote the way the remote desktop works. So we've got config 419.6, 419.15, 419.6, 419.15. Yeah, all good now. No extra broken stuff. Okay. Now, I'm going to open up the... This is the, there's two separate, it's kind of weird, it's the same app, but there's two ways to go into DNF Dragora. If you click on that icon, I may have to right click to do it, I'm not sure, but I clicked on it and nothing's happening yet, but let's wait. But, uh, well, let's see if I can do this. Okay, if you go into admin, you'll see DNF Dragora and DNF Dra uh, Dragora Updater. Uh, that's what's showing the notification up there. Is the updater and I and see used to Yum Yum Extender didn't do that. You could click on it; it would take you into Yum, and then it would show you the updates. You know, now that'll happen. Well, actually, it doesn't happen either way. Notice we didn't see all the updates. Um, well, you did, but you had to go over there and look for them. That's what it is. And Yum Extender, you could see the state of everything right there by the checkbox, and it was very, it was wonderful. It was great. <laughs> So having a page, I forget. I, I, I didn't even know because I never paid enough attention. You know, I'm just trying to f go through things fast, and I didn't pay enough attention that half of the information is over off the screen. You know, But uh, maybe you got to right-click. Yeah, you got to right-click. So you can either update, open Dragora uh, Drag Dialog, check for updates. I want to do the, let's recheck for updates. Then, uh, once it's done doing that, then we'll do the update. Actually, I want to see the dialogue. Well, let's see. Yeah, 29 updates. Okay, we don't have any more updates. Um, well, it does, there's no need in having the extra app open, though. Let's just right-click, update. And I guess it'll just do it in the background. Figure, no, it's going to open it up. Okay. So I don't know what would be the difference of doing this and selecting the open, you know, dialogue, what it said there. Now it'll be searching and doing its thing and go ahead and make it full screen. I like it better that way. And uh, once it gets done, uh, I suppose, yeah, to update see so uh, I think there will be uh, I don't know I forgot what all I'm not going to try to change anything it'll mess it up but um, I forgot what what's in behind each one of those other choices that's one that you can kind of tell what what's going on I don't think you have to uh, oh there's no more in the window but see all these are unchecked. Oh, these are all updates. Okay. These are all updates. Yeah, it doesn't automatically check them. Yeah, 29 updates. So we got Python kernel core. So we're going to have kernel 423. So then we'll back we'll still have three kernels to choose from. We'll have the very the very first one, the one we're running on right now and then and 420 and then what else we got dbus check policy you see linux policy compiler count ss service don't know what those are okay so down here at the bottom you do select all and since i'm uh doing this manually i'm going to go ahead and do some little screenshots Okay, now we'll be getting our kernel updates. I'm glad I went ahead and did this because that was really kind of a thorn in my side, knowing that that was like that. It wasn't really hurting anything. It will, could have if I'd had... Uh, I was afraid it could get to a point where it could hurt something. Okay, so... 
Yeah, there's all this everything to do with the kernel. The kernel, the core, the modules, and the modules extra. So that was all. That's what all I had to. Uh, that is exactly what I ended up taking out. Yeah, all four of those things. Or is it one, two, three? Yeah, four. And then I'm going to click on that so that I can see. I like to go ahead and be show what, everything I'm doing. You know, there we go. Okay. 63 whole megabytes. Let's see how long all that takes. All right. <clears throat> this time it should take long enough to get a progress bar. I notice, I guess it's giving, well, now it's downloading packages, but it'll give progress on each application, I guess, instead of on the overall progress in this window here. I'm doing my screenshots. What in the world? It just crashed. And I didn't do anything. I hit, you know, enter when the screenshot popped up. But I'll try to get a screenshot of that. That's not a good thing. But I hear this, the hard drive working. So I think maybe the updates are still going on. Oh, man. If I had uh, 29 broken up, well, I mean, it'd probably just be the first one, but the first one was what? A kernel update. Well, I suppose, uh, well, I now I know how to uninstall it. Well, if it's not, if it's broken real bad, it won't, then install wouldn't work, though. I'll just have to see. I, I can go into the, okay, yeah, same daggum thing. It just keeps saying there's a problem, but it can't, it's not showing a problem. But there was a problem, the the, the uh, Dragor GUI crash. So maybe it's not a good idea to use the graphic user updater. A lot of times they tell you, they used to tell you that with the LMAX, and now and I'm probably if you go read some stuff, that's probably one of the things they'll tell you is probably best not to use that. I bet you. That's uh, gotten out of whack too. Okay, I want to go ahead and oh that is what I want to open up yeah I hear my hard drive working so something's going on so let's see if DNF is running <coughs> thought I saw it yep DNF Damon so, uh, which that would probably be running anyway, though. I had no, I thought even that that could be a problem running that in the graphic user interface. Definitely don't want to run off and just do a reboot or something right now. Let's see if there's anything to do with update running UPP. I think I've my keyboard jacked up on me again. UP D A T E. Nothing to do with update running. Oh wait, system update run. Oh, it went away. That was weird, but I think I think that I'm right. I think that it is updating, so I'm gonna just leave it alone and let it run. Yeah, kernel packages, new kernel. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll leave that just like that, so I can look at it. This one, this one's not going away, but uh, yeah, four twenty three. New kernel package kernel, Dracut dev mod update. And I don't know. What I'm guessing is that's being done right now. <coughs> so, uh, 
Yeah, since I'm running in root mode, you get to know that the notice is saying, be careful, you can hurt your system. Uh, in that in this particular app and that you'll get it in other apps too but uh, the ones that you don't normally run as root you know uh, I don't guess you get one in uh, DNF but uh, drag or because uh, you have to be root to you know install or uninstall <coughs> but I'm gonna just leave that and uh, I'll have an indication as long as that hard drive's rattling I'll have an indication that um, something's going on that's actually even though that crashed I think my updates it, it looks look I mean I see nothing that tells me the updates are broken it they seem to still be installing how long that'll take or anything I don't know if it's finished already I don't know it says nerd kernel package kernel make a nitrid I think maybe that's what's needed to Oh, you know, to install it when you reboot. That's what I think that is. But I don't know. Let's see. Um, since that's just... Well, that was weird. I was hit uh, F11 to make it full screen. And it uh, made it go crazy. Oh, okay that back to full screen there okay so what I was thinking is let's see update DNF oh drag aura that's what I was thinking it's a drag drag aura is a drag man it's really a drag it doesn't work worth duly I haven't seen it crashing like that a bunch. That's the worst time for it to crash. Oh, you gotta wait. I just, I'm I expect it to work fast. Keyboard's not working right either. Drag. Just leave it on that for a minute. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's D R A G O R A, but I'm not sure how to spell it. <clears throat> a minute ago I didn't think anything was going to come up and then it did with the, when I had update tapped in there so I don't think anything's going to come up under drag aura Try to type in DNF again, see if something comes up. Yeah. DNF daemon system. But the daemon, that might be, that's probably the update daemon. So it's probably going to be running. Well, I think it maybe runs until the update's done and then it may shut down. I can't remember. I did have checked on that before back to update again see what happens uh, got two D's in there it's got sticky keys for some reason when it's on the remote desktop update oh, EPDAT okay and the CPU seems to be working we'll jump go see it's going between 27 and 50 60 percent 63 percent that's down to 21. Memory's just staying right there around 44%. Or right now it's at 44%. Now the update's not there. So that process is finished. That must have been the kernel update being installed. So it's not, not probably not the one that was waiting, you know. I thought maybe it was a, a process that was going to stay running until it rebooted, uh, you know, from that new update. But the hard drive's not rattling anymore, but. By now, if it was Yomax, I would say it's probably done. But uh, as slow as I've seen Dragora be, DNF, Dragora, um, DNF is even slow in the terminal window. Painfully slow. So I'm 
I won't assume that it's done for quite a long time. I think I'll go ahead and get out of this app. What I'm going to do is get out of it and wait like a long time. Like I'm, I'll just end up quitting the video and, uh, you know, checking back on it in a few hours. Or I might let it run all night and, and wait till tomorrow to reboot it. I mean, it's certainly not going to take all night. If it's either going to work or not, I would like to know. <laughs> I hate to not know till tomorrow, but. I just got through getting rid of a broken kernel for me <laughs> rebooting it, unknowing that it was updating. So the last thing I'm going to do is chance breaking this new kernel. Um, at least now I know how to get rid of a broken one. Oh, well, unless it's not uh, enough of it there for it to the I've seen, of course, in Windows you've probably seen it, uh, and in Linux it'll happen too. Uh, if you uh, somehow interrupt you know if you if you shut it down during an installation if the machine crashes power goes out uh, you're doing something in the command line and it hangs up and you shut the terminal down it's like you're doing a manual install uh, and it gets it's too broken to for the uninstaller to even be there you know or for it to be able to run then you have to uh, only way you can get it out of your system is to go find every, not only every folder, and it's a lot more complicated sometimes with Linux because it can be spread out over 10, 20, 30 folders. And, uh, and then where it's referenced, you know, like if it gets referenced in any config files or anything, so you can have a real problem. So you've got to be really careful with installs and uninstalls. Okay, so I'm just going to get out of there. And uh, let me look at my notes. That's really, that was what I wanted to do, I think. I actually succeeded in getting that kernel out of there. Now, as long as I didn't mess up, I won't do that anymore. I will let, I will let, uh, you know, either just leave it alone and let the automatic updates take care of it at 3 in the morning, or but I could do it on the, I've done it on the remote. Uh, on you know, cockpit remote admin tool several times. I haven't had any trouble with that. I could do it that way. thought about doing that, but I thought, well, I'm already here. Might as well do it here. And, of course, you could go in the terminal and type DNF update, and that probably would have been... I would, you would see exactly what's going on. Well, I mean, actually, you give you, I get a better picture of it in the graphic user interface. Uh, the way I just, you know, I made out while I was making those screenshots. So I actually like that better. But you do get a little more information in the command line. Like if you type DNF update, it will show you if there's any errors or problems or missing dependencies or whatever. It'll show you in detail, pretty good detail what it is. But, uh, yeah, and that remote admin updater doesn't give you really, well, I guess if you look back at the logs, you could see details. But let's go in there and see if the logs, let's see. I guess I could go log, just go back. Yeah, the desktop's running. I can look in the logs in the desktop. There's a big, lots of logs. There's, I can see more logs in there than I can in the remote admin. So let's do that before and before I go. Um, if I could see that it was finished, then I could reboot it. You know, it's not rattling the hard drives anyway anymore, but that doesn't for sure mean it's not doing anything. The hard drive rattles when it's being written too fast, you know. But uh, trying to look, read this note, but I can't. Can't do that and talk at the same time. I mean, yeah, okay. I backed up those files to the USB drive. I may have some new ones since then. I'm not even sure. Check the broken boot kernel and uninstalled it. Okay. And Didn't use those commands in the email. Let's see. Is 
desktop, yeah, the desktop backgrounds. I didn't really, I didn't get an XFCE to check that. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, and that extra thing is gone now. Uninstalled. Switch this. Switch. Desk. Okay, so that ought to be enough. <coughs> To help me know what I what I did. Okay, um, let's go back to the desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna log back in. I just now realized what I can do. What was it I realized? I'll think about it here in a second. Okay, so. Um, Oh, I was going to look at the logs. Yeah, let's look at the logs. Well, let's go ahead and look at what's running right now. One more time. <clears throat> let's see. Update. Yeah, see, there's nothing running now. Give it a little time because a while ago it took a little while. I think it was, I think what it was, it was different things coming, you know, starting and stopping the, that was named update processes. That's why it was coming and going because it looked like the one I saw and it sat there for a while was different. Let's see if anything to do with DNF is still running. Yeah, the, the DNF daemon is running, but it may always run. And I think Dragora, well, it wouldn't be running because it crashed. But I don't think I ever saw anything for, for Dragora. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's see. I'm going to use a searcher to find the log. I don't really know where it is in the menus. Startup applications, log file viewer, oh, login window. Yeah, that app is still there. Okay. Well, let's look at the logs first. Yeah, the login window, there may be some things I ought to change in there that I did before. There we go. Now, view log, let's see. Might be one for updates or for DNF. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, DNF log. DNF RPM log. What's under that heading? There's more under there. Oh, okay. Wednesday, January 23rd. Okay. Lib repo log. Okay. I hit control F for, for fine, but I didn't. Nothing came up. I thought it would work. Oh, there it is. Surely there's not that many that are, that are uh, have update in the in the line. I think it's just slow. Probably should just look at well DNF log and DNF uh, RPM log. Well, let's go. Let's get out of that one because 
I don't know what's going on there. I think maybe it's taking forever to. I really don't want every day. I just want today. So let's see. Wednesday, Thursday. Oh. What? This is Wednesday. Why would there be a Thursday when it hasn't happened yet? Well, I don't know. Let's just go. Let's go back to the top of that list. Get over here and search. Oh, that! I'll just hit. I hit the keys, and then I expect it to work. The keyboard didn't. This time it said not found because the keyboard added an extra D. I mean, there we go. Updates. TC yum repos D. That, that's still in yum repos even though we're using DNF. How about that? Option binding does not exist. Testing modular repo. Well, I don't know about all that. What it's really telling me. Well, let's try going to today. Narrow it down a little bit. There we go. No. Yeah, that's today. I was using the mouse before. Now I'm using enter. That's a little quicker. I'm itching to know if it, if it worked. Um, I suppose I could let's see well, I guess I could try t typing updates in the terminal I, I started to say I could open that DNF app again but that probably just crash it there. but if you try it in the terminal and it's busy it'll tell you it's busy maybe I'll do that Just looks like some same thing over and over. Failover method. I don't really know. It's not really telling me anything that's helpful. I do not understand why tomorrow is already in there because this is 6:39 p.m. It's not like it's after midnight or anything. So that doesn't make sense, and it actually. Yeah, a one twenty four. But the date up there shows it's the twenty third. I don't get that. Okay. RPM log. Let's see what's in there. Same thing it does the twenty third and the twenty fourth. Okay, just says logging initialized. Logging initialize. That's all it says there. And there's a firewall. Grubby. That looks like. Hmm. Not sure. It's hard to say it was the. Uh, does look like yeah yeah that looks to me like the updates to the grub uh boot menu so i think it is mail log oh hawk hawk key log was a lot of stuff in there nothing i don't have any mail set up on here hawk 
e-log. Temp folder being cache, all kind of stuff. I don't know what that hotkey is. Secure spooler read me messenger. Okay. You're looking at traditional text log files. Bar log and they are gone. Here's an example. What's going on? Journal CTL. Oh, yeah. Well, it's got more information than I can go through, so to me, it's not really <laughs> missing anything. Chrome jobs, let's see. Got more Chrome jobs than I thought it would have. These are all been set up automatically by the, you know, the server installer because I didn't set any up at all myself. Moot log. And uh, no error. E R R O R, no errors. I think I just there. Nothing failed either. I have to really pay attention that it's typing what I'm, you know, still doing the sticky key thing. I thought there would be at least that one error. Okay, so uh, I'm feeling like that it's uh, done. Let's see, what do we do? Get in as root. Oh, yeah, we're still in as root. Yeah, root bishop. Okay, okay so DNF update. That's what I'm going to do. In that. I mean, you could do check for update. It's going to check for updates is what it'll do. And then uh, if there is any, you know, we'll see what happens. It actually looks to me like maybe there are some. Nothing to do. Okay, very good. So our updates did not get broke, uh, broken or lost or anything. Nothing to do. So we can reboot and we should be getting into our new kernel. Okay. That's what I needed to know. I was very, I was, I had, wasn't able to think of anything to do other than wait. And I, I thought, well, how are you going to know about just waiting, you know? Okay. So, uh, I mean, like waiting overnight wouldn't really help anything, you know? You got to find out. So, um, now, I'm going to get it on the tablet, but, yeah, it's behind. I suppose I could try. Uh, you know, it's, it seems like lately I have restarted the tablet, and it didn't help. Um, didn't I do that earlier? I'm going to try it. I'm going to go over there and restart the app. I don't think the tablet's in trouble, but the app could be. I guess I'll, I got the mic, so I might as well use it. Might as well use it. Okay, we'll get on the lapel mic. <clears throat> ah, back hurts for some reason lately. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's no point in. Uh, 
letting it, you know, just keeping using it when it's really not even working. Now on this tablet, I got to remember just hitting the back button, it doesn't kill the app. You got to go to that other area and actually ch kill the app. Now I'm going to start it back up and see if it helps. What may happen is I, I lose connection to it altogether. I forgot about that. That's why I don't usually do that. Okay, it started back up. So we'll see. That would make me, uh, if it gets completely lost connection to OBS Studio, then I, the only thing I can do to get it back is to uh, Close OBS and open it back up. Let's see if it's going to be there. Okay, good. And it's back to normal. Okay, for now. So, uh, getting tired here I clicked on the wrong thing altogether okay now we're back on the SM58 back on the desktop yeah I clicked on my beginning title so well, our browser still ain't done opening up maybe my machine's getting tired too Well, I don't know if there's something wrong with that particular website or if there's something wrong with my internet connection. I hope not. <coughs> well, it could be. <coughs> See, the, the router, the Wi-Fi portion of the router will get tired and get full. The cache and everything will get full. Uh, and then none of the cameras will work right. But reboot, if that was the case, then the, that wouldn't have helped to... Uh, See, it looks perfect now. It looks way better than the uh, other cameras look. You know, it seems to be real time, but then it doesn't last long. So it doesn't actually help one bit to drop back on the quality. I didn't think it did, but I thought it was worth a try. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Well, <laughs> turn the quality up. What's the difference? Okay, because I can do that right there. Just that it's defaulted to 40, 40, 50% over there on the deal. Yeah, the, the uh, brightness seems about right. So, um, okay. I'll just let the. I was really just hit, wanting to get off that page. Okay, yeah, now my home page thingy. Uh, there must be something wrong with it because it's not working right. It may be the server for this home page thing. Yeah. I could do a speed test, I guess, right quick and make sure that. I don't think there's a problem with that. And I'm not even streaming. I'm just recording onto my machine. So, but now I'm just wondering, that's not very normal. So no, got 200 something megabits down. So it's like it's doing real good. Of course, if you use, uh, if you kind of use two or three different speed tests, you'll get, you know, uh, I'll probably be getting about 195 on, like, say, that testmy.net one. It's usually what it is. I see 215 on here, so I'll probably be getting 195, 200 on that testmy.net, which I think is actually more accurate. I just, this one is the one I've used for years, and I remember the address rule. <laughs> it comes right into my head. Okay, so uh, now let's go get on our tablet again. Yep, it's working now. Okay, so, good. Now.
Well, I guess that was worth it because that was so bad. Sometimes I forget to even check, you know, that this uh, lately that this wasn't whether or not it was working okay. Okay, see, our updates were done and they they were nothing to do, so there's no risk of breaking anything by rebooting. Yeah, so uh, note note to self: don't use the uh, graphic user Gregora updater. It will really freak you out when it crashes, <laughs> and it could have crashed and and not worked. You know, usually when those things crash, it breaks, it stops the update, and it breaks whatever update it was doing when it crashes. Of course, it's crashed so quickly, it might not have actually really started the update yet. Kind of hard to tell. Ah, okay, so we'll look through them here. So we've got the new 20.3.200, then there's a 419.15.300, and then 419.6.300, uh, and then what was the other one, 419.7, I think, and the rescue. So um, I just, you know, hit one of my, oh, you can hit it, I believe, any key, but I always kind of use... Uh, well, not any key, because if you hit E, it'll go into edit mode. So, But you can hit the space bar or the arrow keys. I usually hit the up or down arrow keys that way, because that's what you're going to want to do anyway is go up or down. And then if you hit enter, uh, well, that may work, but it also may select wherever it's at. So I don't hit enter until I'm actually ready to select like that. So we'll boot to that new kernel. All right, cool. I think I'm just about done with this thing where I can actually put it out in the garage. And then I can put it out there and I have the Lynx, old Linksys router out there and I should be able to run it on that. Um, but I'm not sure if it gives trouble. But the, my, So before, pretty quickly, I, pro, I pretty really need to go ahead and what my plan is, well, I could do that first, couldn't I? Maybe I should. Before I take it out there, I didn't think about that. Yeah, um, because I, I know that it's really not working well. It's that Linksys router will do it'll it won't do 54. It was a 50 more megabit, 54 megabits. What I'm doing is using it as a Wi-Fi repeater. So it was a 54 megabit on Wi-Fi. So that would be the fastest you'd get out there. But it used to do the full 54 always. Well, it, over the years, like one of it's a four port router. One of the ports died. And then uh, I started noticing last year sometime that the Wi-Fi speed was really dropping off and that sometimes it would just quit working and you'd have to reboot it to get it to work at all. And so it'll vary between 2 megabits and 15. It never get, I've never seen it getting over 15 anymore. And that's when I had this server out there, but the server kept going online, offline, online, offline, and I uh, got a feeling that had a lot to do with it. <clears throat> So uh, anyway, my TP-Link router, uh, you can put DDWR. I have DDWRT on the Linksys, which uh, it started giving trouble before I put that on there. And that didn't, uh, you know, putting that on there didn't help it or hurt it. It just made me able to turn it into a wireless repeater. Actually, it was working good when I first put that on there, I think. I don't think the Wi-Fi was acting up yet. But it was like a long, long time. I, it, that didn't have anything to do with it. So anyway, I can put DDWRT on the TP link, and it's a uh, it's I think it'll do a max of 750 megabit wireless, and it's a gigabit router. So um, I should be real good out there. I might even be able to take my and I'll set it up as a repeater. That it won't do a repeater with its stock firmware, but with DDWRT you can make it a wireless repeater. And then I might even be able to go outside with my phones and stuff and, and, you know, stream from out there without, you know, I'm getting super, the video being super behind and even chopping, you know, just completely dropping out and stuff. What happens when I go out there now? Okay, let's go in as Dawn this time. Start X. Oh, what happened? Oh, I got the... I didn't even notice what it said. I got the password wrong. I 
think I just I knew I had the right thing in my head. I and I even looked at it, so I must have just mistyped it. Now it's good. <clears throat> Take a little. I guess it's install. Yeah, it's installing the new kernels and all that stuff. It takes a little longer to uh, boot up when you have some updates to install. Most of them uh, in the updates install without a reboot, but the kernel has, has installs upon reboot. I guess you'd say. So. Um, <clears throat> All right. Now, um I know I know what I want to open up. Well, that's running good. Oh, yeah, cuz I don't I'm not on remote desktop, but it's running good. That is really fast. That is good. Uh that you would not on um, Fedora 20, 20, 21, 23, it ran slow. Well, I didn't put that on this machine. I keep thinking this is the IBM uh, machine, but it's not. There may be an actual difference in this machine. Like the processor. Uh, what is the Celeron D? I believe it's a, I don't know if it's a Celeron D or some other Celeron, but it's a Celeron 2.8 gigahertz. And the other, the IBM was a 2.5 gigahertz. I wouldn't think there'd be that much difference, but <clears throat> this thing runs better than that one uh, dual core, <laughs> better than the uh, 1.8 gigahertz or the lap. So like that Dell 1525 laptop, uh, it was already getting sluggish on, uh, you know, older versions of uh, Fedora. Maybe they've actually, I bet you anything, it's the server edition is what it is. So maybe that's a cool thing to do for an older machine is install the server edition and then install your desktop uh, to have it run real good, you know. Okay, there we go. We are on desktop, and uh, get over there and connect to it. Okay, now what I wanted to do, I wanted to be able, I wanted you to be able to see it. I want to get in um, Mate System Monitor because it has a nice little GUI that section of it that'll show you you know the new I want to show that see that new kernel and everything go into system there's four tabs in this one so now we're for door 29 64 bit kernel 423 200 FC 29.x86 64 x86 64 it's in there over and over mate version is 124 one dot twenty dot four Memory, one uh, use the available memory there, 1.9 gigabytes. Uh, I guess that's because, yeah, part of it's shared with the, for the video. This does have a video card in it, so I think it's 120 megabytes of video card that actually has a DVI and VGA. So it's a, for back in the day, it was a good video card. Yeah, Intel Celeron R, doesn't, which I don't know what that R means it might be something it might not be a Celeron D maybe there is a Celeron R I didn't pay much attention to Celerons because I didn't like them I had one when they first came out and it was a slow dog it was a 2 or 2.2 gigahertz or something Dell it was a dog it was cheap but it was quite cheap too and then one day years later I wasn't using it anymore but it was still here in the house being used uh, we had a lightning strike that went down our power lines and it that thing got blew up got blew up and <laughs> not blew up but it, it killed the motherboard it wasn't on a protection circuit anyway yeah 2.8 gigahertz is what this one is <clears throat> and uh 
Available disk space, seven gigabyte. That must be on the root partition, because I know I got more than that out of an 80 gig hard drive. Um, processes. This is one that doesn't have a search. And it all I think it always stays jumbled up. Even if you spread them out, they'll just go back every time you open and close the app. But you can, uh, it's kind of hard, usually hard to do. Let's see if it'll work. Yeah, it's hard to do when you're on remote desktop. Oh, it did work. No, I got the wrong one. I was trying to do the other one. Yeah, CPU percent. Where's memory? There's memory way over there. So if you get it spread out, then you can go by what's using the most memory, which it looks like it's KRFB, 78 megabytes. Let's see. Yeah, that was a KRFB. Now let's see what's using the most CPU. XOR, mate system monitor. I <laughs> see, and then KRFB, mate system monitor. That's why I don't run this one. It is the worst one about using up, you know, too many resources all on its own. I don't know why, because of all, maybe the, all these graphics here. They must still be running in the background, even though you're not looking at them, is what I'm guessing. They're neat. So you have the memory, 757 megabytes out of 1.9, and all that. And then the CPU usage, of course, there's only one CPU, so you don't have multi-cores to look at there. But it's doing all right. Oh, here's it. Yeah. Um, 36.3 gigabyte of... 8.7 on the dev map. Oh, that's the uh, dev map. XFS? What in the world? That evidently is the root partition, though. I didn't remember it did that. And then the boot partition is only 700 and... Uh, where is it? Oh, 795 megabytes oh okay and then the root partition is 15 gigabytes yeah but it's not ext4 it's xfs <clears throat> and uh and then the home partition is not uh, i thought i logged in as dawn this time why isn't it showing the home partition i have to look in some other app i guess so anyway um close this and it'll help it run better Okay, um, let's see. That's something I hadn't thought about looking. Let's see what the disk space, what's going on with it. Disk management, disk. Uh, yeah, see, Tiger, well, Tiger VNC viewer, but I believe that KRFB runs, like I said, Tiger VNC server, what I remember. Disk usage analyzer. Actually, let's look in there. That'll tell us, unless it takes too long to run, that'll tell us exactly what's being used. So, uh, I don't get what's uh, going on with my disks. <laughs> Seems like it doesn't see the home partition is what it looks like. Hundred percent of seventeen point one gigabyte. Total file system usage, 56% of 9.6 gigabytes. Oh, let's, let's click on scan home and see what happens. Yeah, okay, now it sees it. Unless it's done something really unexpected. I just used automatic partitioning, you know. Makes me think I'm on that 30 gig hard drive, but I'm almost certain I'm not. I thought I was on the 80 gig hard drive. 
And it actually would probably be okay. I just would have to remember not to start installing a bunch of stuff. There we go. Dawn 49. Oh, megabytes. No. Okay. Uh, now let's scan file system again. So there's scan home and then there's scan file system. Okay, now boot, temp. Maybe this will tell the whole everything. I like this box set set up better than that circle one. It just it really shows me that how big each thing is real quick. You can use this. You can once it's all done, you know, you can use it to find big files, and you can like right click on a box and go to the folder and delete it straight from there. It's pretty good at disk disk usage analog. I'm gonna make sure, yeah, okay, desktop. I oh, know, well, as soon as I forget and stop checking, that's when I mess up, so I have to be paranoid about it. <coughs> yeah. taking a lot longer than I expected. Well, and this is taking, well, actually, it's taking as long as I, I did expect. The first reading was not the whole thing. So this will be the whole system. I don't know if I can open up another app or not. Let's try and see. No, it's pretty kind of heavy on the resource usage, I think, so I don't think I should try. But, uh... <clears throat> Boot, hundred ninety eight point five megabytes. I think that's what's being used, and then just have to wait on the rest of it. See, those are kind of grayed out because they're not ready to be accessed yet. It says total file system capacity seventeen point one gigabytes. Use 9.6 gigabyte available 17.7.5 gigabyte. Did I log in? Oh no, I can't remember nothing, can I? I don't. Okay, let's see. What's I think it's better to open up the uh, file manager than maybe I may be in as root, and I'm not used to <laughs> what you see, and you know I don't. Like I said, I I don't no, I'm in this dawn. I don't I don't log in as root and run the machine hardly ever anymore. Well, let's see. It may just be the remote desktop that's slow because that app opened up and closed real quick. So let's try um the disk. It. I was really just going to see kind of you know quick look at it. I wasn't um, wasn't planning on doing that. What's it doing? Oh, it's refreshing very slowly. Okay, uh, this one here: manage drives and media. <clears throat> yeah okay so um yeah 79 gigabyte partition to so i don't know what that thing is doing and why 80 yeah 80 gig hard drive max store uh 16 gigabyte block device that is the root like i thought okay xfs and then 2.2 gigabyte swap. And where's the boot? Um, I guess the boot is inside of the. Of the it's being done different now. They used to have a, a root as a um, a um, 
Root and boot were, uh, I can't see, think of the right word, uh, regular partitions. I can't even say the right word. And then your home partition was an LVM. Now they've got them inside of the LVMs. The only thing that is, uh, I think it's the boot partition is the one that's an, yeah, actually that's it right there, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's boot. And that is, uh, it's 1.1 gigabytes, uh, and it's not much use. See, there's an 809 megabyte free. That is an EXT4 primary. That's it, primary partition. It finally came into my head. And then this partition 2 is an LVM2 PV. It contains everything. It's got the, uh, um, the root, the home, and I think even the swaps in there in, in with it, I think. There's other apps that you can see actually what's in there. And uh, they started, I don't know when they started doing it. I just noticed it in Fedora 28. There we go. We're done. Okay, so now why I'm only seeing, you know, part of it here, I don't know. But the numbers up there don't match. But see how you can tell? Then, like, if you click on something. It'll go over there, and then you'll see exactly how much space is is in it. Kind of got to drag that over to see the numbers, but if I can get it to do it, I'm not sure where you get a hold of it to drag it. It keeps on doing something. It's trying to change and refresh, but... Uh, It's not working so good here on this. Uh, I guess it's kind of resource hungry app. I think, yeah, I think it is. Seems like I remember that. For some reason I got into, oh, I, I just clicked on one of those boxes is how I got in there. But there, you should be able to, move, I know you can move this over so that you can see the rest of this. But you can do that, I guess. But that's ridiculous to try to read it like that. But you can see the, um, So, you know how much is uh, how much it is how much file how, size of what's being used and then how many items and so it's pretty good uh, there we go it expanded it when I clicked on one of those is what happened and then we got let's see boot is uh, there not much in there at all and get that to, there we go, it resized finally. There we go. Still didn't seem to get it all, but. Well, I guess it did. Okay, so then, uh, home. Yeah, uh, let's see. Google 4, I wonder what that is. Screenshots. So, uh, for instance, if we went to the screenshots, it would go right to that folder. 10.3 10 meg megabytes, 22 items. And then, I forgot how you get, oh yeah, that's how you get back to where you could see, like say, you're curious about what that Google thing is. 5.5 megabytes, there's not gonna be anything big in here. Uh, but see, it's organized as what's the biggest. So then the next biggest thing is the cache, looks like. Yeah, see, it's organized in si by size. So we're in Dawn now. Then you can go back to wherever you want, you know. SRV, where's VAR? There it is, VAR. There's where my websites are. That actually might have, yeah, 2.2 .2 gigabytes. Uh, video might be. One of the biggest things. Um, looks like it needs to be moved over again to see the numbers, but uh, the video I think is probably the biggest. Yeah, 699 megabytes, and then oh, the, yeah, I have the. It's called the HTML Bible on there, so it's got some pretty good size files. 
There it is again. It's taking up some space. Uh, my music. Well, that's me playing guitar. Uh, playing with my guitar. And uh, how much is it? 91. My music. That's the 320 kilobits. That's my Don Songs album. <coughs> I just know what that is. And there's my Living Beings album. That's <coughs> <coughs> 83 megabytes. And then, so you see, it's a really cool app. There's another, some more MP3s, PDFs. I don't know what, what, what's in those. And then 1.5 gigabyte of HTML files. Is, I wonder if that's like the whole thing or something. No, that's HTML file. Oh, it's an HTML directory, evidently. Let's look at it and see. Yep, HTML directory. Oh, okay. See, all that, a bunch of different, oh, that's all my websites are under that. Okay. Yeah, that's www.html. That's what that was. Okay, so, and I was on var, the, the parent folder of all of it, going through there. So, and then what do we got? Repo data. That's part of, oh, I don't know. That was in, oh, that's in var. DNF uh, files. It's downloaded by DNF. Repo data. This is part of your, see, your updates and your installed apps and all that stuff. I didn't remember, but that's where they're RPMs, not too many. Hawk, Hawkey, that was that thing I saw a while ago. Not there's another repo data repositories. That's what that is. Some more Anaconda, MC. MC stands for Midnight Commander. Usually, I don't know what it's standing for there. DNF. So, but just for my website, this is my website. So back to that. And the colors don't really mean, they're just colors. They don't mean something. Uh, it's just the size, how big the, these, you know, rectangles are as to which one is uh, bigger. Got more data. Well, let's see. That's 314. Yeah, see, that's only 13 megabytes. But I guess they're kind of laid out in the order of the directory tree. Yeah, see those same MP3s, PDFs. So you can see what's taking up the most space in your folders, you know, and on your drive. So it's really useful. I've used it before to find uh, when my systems would be getting full and I didn't have a, any more backup drive space to use, you know. I'd say, okay, i got to delete something and let's find out what's what's taking up this space. And I found, like, things that I didn't know I had to, I'd installed or turned on something like... Uh, for instance, you can uh, you can mirror your uh, RPMs. You know that you, everything that you ever installed will be mirrored onto your system. And boy, we talk about filling up your hard drive fast. So uh, it's called uh, it's actually called something about cache. Uh, it used to be Yum Cache. You know, back when I did it, it was Yum. So it was Yum Cache something or other. And uh, so it wasn't. Uh, Well, actually, I started to open that app up, but it doesn't show much. That's the task manager from XFCE. Um, looks to me like <clears throat> I'm pretty well. I, I'm sure I'll think of some more stuff by tomorrow, but I'm pretty well done with it. I think I'm going to be satisfied with it. And I had thought I would take it right out there and plug it into that Linksys and see how it does. And I can, but it's a lot of work with all the junk I have to move. So now I'm thinking maybe I should set up the router first because I'm pretty sure, well, I'm not real, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know. I guess I'm, I don't know how sure I am that I, I'm going to, It's. I don't want to take it out there and then have my website go up and down, up and down because it can't even handle a small amount of traffic, you know, on that router. Actually, it may not be traffic that gives it trouble. It may just be that it just is in such bad shapes, old and wore out, that it it's just work, you know, kind of working and not working, working and not working. And, uh, yeah, Blivet GUI is a partition editor that should show space. I like Gparted best. But let's see what it looks like. I haven't opened it up in a while. But that's coming by default with Fedora now. You're still getting Gparted, though. I used to always have to go get Gparted and install it. Oh, and it's you have to log in as root. <clears throat> and... Uh,
but you can just use it. You know, I'm not going to edit any partitions. And you, and you be careful of being just opening up these apps that can edit your partitions. You could actually, you know, completely destroy your system just with a slip of the right click or something. So, uh, got to watch out. See, like it defaulted to select. Uh, partition SDA one, which is your boot partition. Well, if you did something to it by accident, you'd break it. And see, here's Fedora LVM seventy three point fifty five gigabyte, and I was trying to see. Yeah, okay. This shows you what's in there. If I can move that over or not, this must have been the app that does that. Oh, it still doesn't show you. So um, the uh, LV, it's got all different, they've changed the way they call everything. But Fedora Bishop Cohen, see, it just shows dot, 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 even though I moved it over to give it room to show it. That's ridiculous. That's weird. So anyway, LVMLV XFS file system, 15 gigabyte. That is the root partition. I know that because we're just looking at it. The swap is 2 gigabytes, 2.707. Free space, 56.48 gigabytes. That would be the on on the uh, just well, that's weird, but that's what's not being used. This is a whole different way of uh, showing it. <laughs> and let's see, Bishop Co swap, and then uh, that's all that does is just move that selector down there. So uh, now physical view, that's a logical view. Okay, that's what it is. It can show physical and logical view. Okay. Now SDA seventy four point fifty six kilobyte, and then yeah, that's not much to see. Okay, now let's go back up to the beginning there. SDA1 is the boot partition. It's only a uh, gigabyte, 1024 megabytes. And then uh, uh, LVM, which contains the, the swap, the home, and the root, uh, <coughs> is uh, 73.55 gigabytes. So this is definitely uh, lays it out in a way it makes sense, much more than... Uh, it was kind of hard to make sense of it. And I love that, uh, you know, disk space app for, for cleaning up your disk, but boy, making sense of the partitions was hard. I, I hadn't even opened that thing up in quite a while. So, yeah, that tells you something that I don't, well, let's go ahead and look at it. I don't think Gparted even gives you that information uh, in that way to where it uh, makes sense. Uh, as to what they're doing with it. I didn't really want to put the 80 gig drive in there because I thought I won't, uh, you know, be wasted space, but I, then I decided, well, the 30 gig wouldn't be big enough if I started adding some, uh, Fancy new apps that I, you know, that I could run on. The, uh, I forgot which ones I actually was wanting to try now. But now, see, this is how it looks like in uh, Gparted. Uh, XT4 boot tells you the size. It's easy to see, quick, quick to look at. And uh, let's see. I think you can drag that over from right there and see the rest of that. Maybe. Yeah. See, now it says. LVM2, PV, Fedora, Bishop Co. But then it doesn't break it down and you don't see what's inside the LVM. You don't see that it's root, home, and a swap. <clears throat> so it's kind of not uh, equipped to show the, the new way the LVM2. It does work with LVM2. You can create them. You can delete them. Well, you can always delete them, but it, it actually gave an error, but it worked. But now you can, uh, you, can you know, I think you can create an L. I'm not going to even right click on nothing to even just to say that, but I'm pretty sure you can create an LVM2 with Gparted now. Used to, it would say it doesn't know what to do with this drive. You know, can't can't handle it. But and then there's no other drives in here, so you can't show anything else. Get out of there right now. I'm getting nervous. Work too hard on this thing to end up breaking it, just fiddling around. So. But that is a good little system. <clears throat> Even if you weren't you running a server on it, it's got your basics to, you know, the only thing I don't have in there is VLC. 
try media player. Now I want to install it. I might as well do it now if I wait. There'll be that one time when I really want to use it and I won't have it. Let's see. I would just type, uh, you know, DNF install VLC, but um, I wouldn't get everything like I was saying yesterday or the day before. <clears throat> course now we'll have to wait for it to do its scanning and all that stuff I was just thinking oh you might be able to do a group install VLC but I don't think it has a group <clears throat> if you did a group you would get a bunch of other media players and stuff and I think I will Uninstall that one I can't stand. That way it won't fight with VLC. What's it called? Parole? Yeah, P A R O L E. I'm going to uninstall that. I remember that it, it doesn't play hardly anything and it'll crash. Well, it did. I mean, I haven't used it in a while, so I don't know. XL Music Player, I think it's okay. Uh, and sometimes some of these things will play stuff that VLC won't play, but I don't think that's the case with Parole. When that gets to where it can work, I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's the only other thing I can think of that might need to be done. <clears throat> like I said, other things, you know, can always be done as I go. And there are... Um, I don't know. I, I don't even know, remember what apps... I, well, I actually wanted... Here's... Here's basically what I was, the things that I wanted to install was a di, I, as a dynamic websites, you know, like uh, I used to like, uh, <coughs> I can't think of the name of it. Um, anyway, there's things like, I don't know what, Django and different things like that come to my mind right now. But things, things like that, uh, that's not the one that I want. But, uh, well, I'm not sure what I want now. It's, it's been years since I... Drupal, D-R-U-P-A-L, that's the one I used to like a lot. I liked the way it worked, and administrating it wasn't too bad. There, there can be really complicated to administrate once you get them installed. But uh, but the thing was, is I have them on my Fedora 14 system. I installed them all. Most of them, some of them I installed in the repos, but some of them I had to manually install. And then you have to manually update them, and you have to edit config files, and it's just a nightmare of work that's why I never put them live but the ones that come in the Fedora repos like uh, for instance I think Drupal does um, they will you know if you install them from the repos they'll automatically update themselves yeah Drupal 7 used to it had Drupal 6 and 7 but I imagine you just have 7 now um it took a long time to get Drupal 7 completely, you know, like out of beta and ready to go. A couple of years, I think, seemed like. But, yeah, see, so um, Drupal, everything to do with Drupal is there. I'm not doing that now. But that's something I've been wanting to do for years. See, I used to have dynamic websites when I was using GoDaddy. Uh, that's how I learned how to use them and how, you know, uh, I had them all set up. By, I got them started, but I never finished building you know uh, copying my websites over to them you couldn't just copy them over in, in like a you know like FTP them over or anything you had to copy and paste each and every page you, your text from each and every page and I just never finished it so that's how come I was still using an old school HTML website because it just turned out to be a nightmare even it was easy to set up Drupal and it was like two or three clicks in GoDaddy but Hopping your website over, well, that was something else. And it still would, won't be easy. I mean, there's, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure somebody knows. There's a lot of things that you could do if you were, uh, you know, a website admin trained person. But uh, <clears throat> um, a lot of it you just have to go page by page, and that's something I just never, I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I wanted to, but 
I never found my round to it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay, so VLC. <coughs> but then there's other things too. They're just um, that I'd wanted to. Uh, you know, it did change when I hit enter. So maybe it is searching when you hit enter. Yep, it is. Finally, finally, finally. They heard me. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've dropped about that in the vi and whenever I'd hit enter and go, oh, crap. You think somebody at Fedora is watching my video? One of my videos or all, some of them or all of them? Maybe they're uh, watching them with a big data machine somehow. <laughs> kind of doubt it. Okay, but what's the, what's the problem here? I don't see a single entry of VLC media. Media player, video LAN, VLC. Yeah, it's VLC. Why is it not finding VLC? VLC. Am I crazy? Is it not VLC? I could be crazy. Let's go get on my... It's on my machine. I know it's VLC. There we go. VLC media player. Maybe tired, but I'm not. I know what VLC is. Ah, what's wrong? Okay, I clicked over here. F11. I must have hit F12. I can't. I'm, my eyes are getting so blurry. I can't even see. Okay, let's try in file names and see if that will find it. <clears throat> Surely they didn't take it out of the repos. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe you got to type video LAN. Well, I can't spell video. Video. I think it's just taking so long. I keep, I, it's taking, I expect stuff to start coming up just about right after you hit enter because that's the way, you know, you, uh, yum, yum did, DNF, yum extender did, UNF extender, I mean, did. And that's gone. There's no DNF extender anymore. And it actually worked well. I don't get why it's gone. Uh, <clears throat> Package kit, I saw that a while ago. That was the original long time default, uh, you know, manager installer. Okay, B I D E O. Why aren't you showing in descriptions? There's bound to be thousands of <laughs> hundreds of apps that in the description the word video, B I D E O, video is in there. Maybe I'm giving it so much to do it's going to crash on me. There it is. Yeah, it was just taking too darn long. So I imagine every instruction that I gave it may do. Go ahead and do. Let's see. Yeah. I just realized V is way down towards the bottom. So, YouTube DL that's still around. It really didn't. It downloads YouTube videos. You can watch them and download them, but it doesn't work very well. Well, the thing is, it doesn't do is it only finds like a tiniest portion of the YouTube. Doesn't search all of YouTube. Surely they have not taken VLC out of. Fedora. 
all together. Is it still working on searching or something? Try player. <clears throat> At least now we're in the V area, but I can see all the V's. I don't see VLC. This is perhaps repos for the server, you know, operating system version. I think that they're actually not just a general. I don't think they give you the general. Uh, <clears throat> oh. don't give you the general repos I just realized something it may be in the RPM fusion repos and I didn't I haven't installed those oh yeah I remember that match all words but I don't that might be helpful when I want to do keep you know more than one word but I don't know kind of seems like something I might want but uh, Repositories. Yeah, I don't have the RPM Fusion in there. I'm actually too tired to fiddle with that right now. I don't know if I want it in there now. Well, I might. I don't see any reason why it would hurt. But yeah, this is just the basic. I'm almost certain that's what it is. I think the VLC is going to be in the RPM Fusion repos. See, all we have is Fedora, Fedora Modular. Updates, updates modular. So, yeah, I mean, there are some others you could select, but probably don't need any of those. I don't really want testing or source. I don't really need debug info unless I want to really get into checking. Which one was I trying to report bugs in and couldn't, wouldn't work? You do need the dbig info repos if you're going to report bugs. That's what that's for. Okay, we'll hit cancel. I am not going to worry about VLC anymore. I just realized what's going on. See, I'm so tired. I'm just not thinking, and I'm not going to install or do. I'm not going to install or do anything else tonight. It's. But it was later. 8.39. Why does it say in 7.40 p.m. when it's 8.40? Let me look at my... Yeah, it's 8.40. I think my time zone is wrong in here. I don't know why it would be, but it seems to be. It's an hour off. 12 hour format, locations, Fort Worth, America, Chicago. I don't understand. It's not time for any time change now, so I don't think that I'm off with everything. I'm, uh, my main computer would be right. Well, does that mean I get it wrong or oh you're manually setting the time, okay. 
Or is that making it do it automatically? Fort Worth, America, Chicago. It's not showing the weather. Sometimes they do that anyway, though. And they start working again. Type of city. Yeah, that all worked fine. And it says... Unless there's a Fort Worth, Chicago. I didn't think about that. Should only be one Dallas. Dallas Love Field. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I remember now. It it was right because Yeah. He Texas and I picked the naval. I thought about doing Sphinx because it might be there's one little airport out here. Can you copy that? No. Let's try the Sphinx Airport and see if it's right because it's wrong. Oh, no, we got... Oh, they're both Chicago, so... I'm going to remove that one. You don't need two of them. Well, I don't know why the time is an hour off. It shouldn't be an hour off. Doesn't make sense. I'm not going to worry about it tonight. <clears throat> okay, um... Oh, that's because I've typed in the password, the uh, root password. So, I, I'm really can't, I'm just still can't get over that it works as well. Of course, it doesn't look like it's working great in the remote desktop because it can be a little, la real laggy sometimes. But, uh, um, that IBM, I don't know if I ever did. I might have, yeah, I think it would start just flat on getting to where it wouldn't hardly respond if you used it this much and opening and closing apps and everything. Um, the IBM, um, definitely not near the machine this one is for some reason. Maybe it's the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit running on Fedora, the new roof doors. I hadn't thought about that. Opened up the Firefox just to... <coughs> Just to uh, look at it one more time. Yeah, I haven't set anything up. Well, actually, I messed around with stuff as root because I wasn't remembering that I was root. I think I did all the... Yeah, I did. I did all those... Getting that straightened out. Or a bunch of it. I want that. And then I went and did customize. Oh, yeah, you can right-click there and say customize. And I don't need that. Or, let's see. Let's put this up here <coughs> first. <coughs> and then get rid of that. Put this up here. I don't want those pockets or any other junk. Those sidebars. Yeah, I don't use the sidebars either. <coughs> That's it. I don't have any add-ons or anything in here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I don't like that. Let's see. Can I get rid of that? Remove. Yeah, I don't like that. What's that? I don't like it being there. I'll leave it for now because it may be the only good way to get to some of that stuff. I'm not sure. Okay, so the Django. That's probably why the Django was on my mind. We'll build a uh, build a Django rest Django restful API on Fedora. Kubernetes is a new thing. I forgot what it does exactly, but I think it's well. They're not sandboxes, but they're. Uh, um, I think it's the newest way of implementation of uh, containers. That's something I was wanting to learn about, and, and you had to have 64-bit to do that. That's what I was trying to talk about earlier.
they called it automatic, Fedora Automatic. I think they've changed, stopped using Fedora Automatic, and I think they're going to Kubernetes now. And Fedora Automatic didn't even get to where you had to do everything in the command line, so I didn't, I just didn't try it yet. I was waiting for them to get it to work. <laughs> it was some GUI, at least a, you know, like a cockpit type, you know, web administration for it or something, which is what they would do that wouldn't really have a bunch of, you know, it's it wouldn't really have a bunch of gra regular graphic user interface apps. Well, I want to see what the... Oh, I, I thought I opened up the... Let's see what it says about it. Oh, with Kubernetes, that is the one. Microservices. They, tr they try to make it sound so neat and full cool that you don't even know what the heck, by what, the way they describe it, you don't know what the heck it does. RESTful. Fedora build a RESTful app. Well, uh, application, of course, it's, you see it's in caps, so it must stand for, uh, it's an acronym, I guess. Delete the crud. <laughs> and then, see, you got to jump in the command line to get started with it. What does it do? Is it Python? The whole thing is running in Python. I, <clears throat> I don't guess it's for a... The Django was a... Uh, all I've ever known about it is it was for uh, running on web servers for uh, websites, you know, uh, dynamic websites it may do more than that though they're talking I don't th didn't think you could run Python on a website server is a maybe you can now <laughs> well anyway can't send it to myself I didn't set up any email in here yet I either I either want to set up, I might go ahead and set up my, uh, I used to have my, one of my older servers, I think it was for door 21 on the IBM. Um, oh wait. Oh, it doesn't have, uh, I don't want it in the toolbar. Let's put it in there. Um, now I went blank. You see, it's, uh, that's working surprisingly well, considering I'm on, on kind of a sluggish remote desktop connection, you know. But on the machine, it would be, uh, really pretty good, you know. So, uh, I'm sure if I, you know, try to use it as your main machine, it wouldn't handle it, but, uh, Oh yeah, what do I want to do about that desktop? Uh, I don't know if I want to. I don't necessarily think there's any reason in rebooting it again. But I was thinking about logging out and letting it be in the. Uh, well, I could let it run tonight in the desktop and see what it's like tomorrow. See if it's any slower or anything. That'll be something good to know. Yeah. So I'll just let it run just like that tonight, and then tomorrow, as a rule, I'm going to run it, you know, and in, in just term, just be booted up into the terminal, not log in at all, and uh, then if I want to get on it like that, now, I think all these last couple of days is a perfect example of why I went to, it, it did turn out to be a lot of trouble. Uh, well, it's new, you know, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve because things are new and different, you know, uh, on top of, uh, well, they're new and different. Each, each release has something different and sometimes it turns out to be quite a bit things to learn. Uh, and me not remembering things too. I just have so much trouble with my memory, but, uh, um, But 
also the thing but being that it's new and different the things that i remember sometimes have changed for instance fedora 23 i ran fedora 23 all this time until now and then i did well i put fedora 28 and then fedora 29 came out while i was you know working on my dns server and then well, i might as well just upgrade it to i was going to reformat it anyway i thought well i might as well do fedora 29 so between fedora 23 the last thing i had my server running on uh <clears throat> You know, now I discover that evidently they've, um, unless it's something to do with my particular hardware, I think they have dropped off support for the normal. Well, I suspect that it could be they've dropped off support for the normal Plymouth, you know, GUI login screen. But then again, it may just be my hardware, like there those posts I found. The thing is, I did the commands, uh, you know, that was supposed to the BIOS if it had to do with the BIOS. Uh, but here, see the IBM is oh I guess I would guess is older than this one because it's 32 bit. It could be the same age, but it's 32 bit. This is 64 bit. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a, two or three years newer than the IBM. But uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I did remember things that turn out to not work on this machine that's what i'm trying to say and there could be a, just several different reasons at least three i can think of the bios the uh well the dis discontinuing that uh a part you know in the server edition of the uh plymouth boot screen and the themes maybe you know i, I, I put i tried two different themes they both seem to work as they should one i'm using now you know the nice blue screen and all that with the fedora in there <clears throat> and then that other one i did was just a little blue, blue bar blue and white bar which is what fedora's default theme is fedora's server default theme is it worked but i didn't get a boot screen so i tried something else so that's the three things i can think of and uh <clears throat> trash can is distracting me i don't like looking at it <clears throat> um And I gave it to heck of a, I would say the good old college try, but I always think I can't say that since I didn't finish college. I did go for a while. I, when I was 32 or 35 years old, I wanted to go right out of high school, but I got married and raised three kids instead. So when my kids were almost grown, my daughter was 17, my oldest daughter, I went to junior college for a while, and then I got laid off and couldn't afford to keep going. I was working and going to college, and boy, that was fun. That was after I was already divorced, too, so I was... At three, and I had my kids, so I had three kids to take care of. Going to going to working full time and going to college at night, <clears throat> and then I got laid off from that. What was good job, and uh, then could never afford to go back after that. Well, and on top of that, my health was. I could have went. To, I could have done. I probably could have found a way to go to finish going to school, uh, except for my health was always the biggest factor. So. Uh, because it got worse and worse over the years but uh let me see <clears throat> um i'm gonna look at the tablet and give it away here well see it's still working so why does it i don't know how long it takes it to get out of whack but uh see this is oh my gosh this video is two hours and 39 minutes is longer than the other one oh wild i think the other one was right at two hours so well, maybe that's why I got tired. So I guess if I want to keep that, um, if I'm going to use the tablet, then I need to <clears throat> reboot it as soon as I see it slowing down. There's always a risk, though, of completely losing it. And um, but I thought I didn't ever say it, but I was thinking, okay, so if I've lost the tablet, I could still grab this camera and set it over here. I've done that before when other cameras quit on me. I'd grab this one and set it over here on the desk and aim it at the. Then I have to move all my cups and everything out of the way for it to sit over there. But I can do that. But it's, but it's at a real weird angle. Uh, there's no other place to put it on that little short tripod, though. I, hold, I cannot hold still at all, so I can't sit and hold a camera. <clears throat> It'd be terrible looking. You know, when y'all zoomed in, well, it wouldn't be zoomed in. I'd be close enough. It wouldn't have to be zoomed, but it would be just shaking, you know. And I've I, whenever somebody does that and they... And it's sitting there shaking the whole time, and you're trying to read the text they're talking about. It drives me crazy. I can't stand it. It makes my eyes go wonky. So I don't want to do that. So 
I'd rather have a a blurry picture and just describe what's on the, at least you, you get the idea of what I'm talking about than have a, a clearer picture, but it's all shaky, you know, that. so but I guess, uh, these three cameras are all the same age. The batteries are already pretty much, it's, it's not dead. I mean, it works, but it's, it's full up and I think it's too dangerous to use for phone three. I think I'm pretty sure that phone one is swelling a little bit. So if it could start swelling any more, then I'll be, you know, that'll put it out of commission. So either I got to buy batteries or, uh, well, you, you can, I saw, I looked it up today. I saw a bunch of videos on how to, it's kind of what I had in mind. If you want to try to run them or well, either swap in a different, um, buy a cheaper battery and then take the BMS off of that, uh, your old battery and then put it onto the, you know, wired into the new one so that it, it talks to the phone right you know you could do that but you're only saving well, the ones i saw from adafruit were 12 something i'm sure you could find some more i think i saw some on amazon for <coughs> no, no i didn't i don't think i saw any really any cheaper i would trust the ones at adafruit better than just buying them off of amazon they could be fake batteries or anything and adafruit is if you've ever heard of them it's a an open source electronics company they sell uh, um see well they sell adrenos uh, they don't i don't think they yeah they didn't invent them but they sell them did they no somebody else invented them but uh anyway uh they're a little bit more expensive per item per item than some of the other supply big supply companies and stuff sometimes but uh they have all kinds of help and documentations and forums you can join and everything else it's really cool but anyway, um, and they have specialty things, you know, like they had uh, they had some little B, uh, BMSs, battery management systems. What BMS is? Uh, it's not BS. It's BMS. <clears throat> um, battery. They had some little BMS uh, boards that had uh, one had your micro USB. You could just plug a micro USB cable into it, and then wire that into your battery. So it would. That would make your battery charge, uh, your light polymer battery. That's what I was looking at. Um, charge it safely, you know, and accurately and all that. Um, and then they had one for just a regular USB-B and a cable. And, uh, of course, you like $12 for the battery, 5 to $8 for the little adapter. So you're adding up some money fast. I'm just, that's not for my phones, but it just, just I was looking at them going, oh, cool. But... Uh, for instance, like for a Raspberry Pi, I'd run Raspberry Pi off of or something like that. But, um, <clears throat> and then Amazon, there was one seller, but there's no reviews uh, on there, but there's one seller that had the ba exact OEM replacement for my battery for $16 and something. And I saw several of them around that price, 16 to $21. But uh, I'm not just looking at one, I'm looking at three of them because I think that within the next six months to a year, they'll end up all three being replaced. So I got to looking earlier. Um, well, I, I thought, well, surely you could uh, fool that. I thought, well, maybe if you took the BMS out of the old battery, you could wire it up just to a USB cable and fool that thing into thinking it's a battery. And, uh, but I thought, well, I don't know how the pinout, what the, how to figure what the pinout would be and, uh, figure it, how to figure it out easily. Cause there's four, I believe there's four uh, <clears throat> pins on the battery, three or four on my battery. I, I could grab it, but I, I won't bother. Um, so anyway, I found a bunch of a bunch of short videos and a, and some you know articles and stuff. But I ended up just watching the videos that it ended up being quicker uh, or easier. <clears throat> and so uh, you got to watch out though uh, some of those videos. M most of the first three I saw, they were just wiring the USB straight into the phone. The phone doesn't run. It takes five volts to charge your battery, but your phone doesn't really look. It doesn't really need and and want five volts. Uh, the batteries are like three point seven volts to four point one volt or two volts or something like that. That's what they range in. So, you know, your battery needs more voltage than it's to, than it's r running voltage to charge it. Right. So, uh, 
some phones might be able to handle that up that five volts, but uh, you also might get a spike on that USB cable. You know, you plugging it into different things. You might plug it into a wall wart. You might plug it into a computer. You know, you might plug it into a battery bank. You know, and you might get a spike of five, you know, five and a half, six volts, and you might blow out your phone. So uh, they didn't, and these people were uh, were just showing you how wonderful and easy it is to do that, and how well it worked. You know. And the other thing is, they I could see they were a little bit older phones, and I don't think the phone like mine, I think it has uh, sensors in it where it wouldn't even uh, start up. <clears throat> and, and then some of the other videos were saying, showing you how to, uh, you know, to uh, do it with the, take the BMS out of the battery. Of course, then you got that, there is a risk. You better be very careful because if you puncture the wrong part of that battery, you could just, just, combust just go up in flames and and you can't put that out don't put water on those phones it makes it worse water interacts with the chemicals in the lye polymer batteries and the lye what they call lie on lye polymer and lie on and anyway all those lye batteries uh they're not like lye you know like in lye soap but um start with li uh don't put water on those uh, that makes them worse and they're they they, I've seen, you know, you may have seen the videos of them, people with them burning. Some of them made them burn on purpose, you know. I saw some good videos where they actually set up control tests. And uh, they are kind of surprisingly harder to get, get to burn when you're trying to do it <clears throat> than you might think. But they can also, you just don't know what kind of state they're in. If they're uh, right on the edge of of those two uh um, parts inside the, I can't say the right things, um, cells for lack of a better word. Uh, cells are usually what you talk about when you talk about, you know, lead acid batteries, but, uh, them, uh, the two different chemicals t catching, uh, touching each other and catching, you know, which causes that chemical reaction and that hot, f hot fire, uh, then it could just happen while it could happen while you're just handling it, even when they're all in bad shape. But from what I read, it's not super common. When they get old and they start oxidizing, it's what generally causes them to swell. Uh, uh, they start off-gassing. They start, you know, putting out gas, which that gas can be, if I'm, I, think the, I think the gas, it would be depend on what kind of battery you have, what the chemical is in it, like ni uh, nickel cadmium or polymer. Uh, lithium ion that's the other one i was thinking of um i think it, I, I don't think they all put out the same gas they might but anyway one of the gases is hydrogen and hydrogen is flammable so in itself <coughs> so um uh, of course hydrogen is not going to just self-combust you know like those uh, but but if you had a a flame, a spark, or something, you know, it would, it would, it would go up in your, and you're near it, it's going to go up in your face, you know. So, um, uh, lead acid batteries, when they're being charged heavily, they put out uh, hydrogen gas, and they can be dangerous too. If they're in a contained space, uh, and you spark, you know, put out a, and you have a spark or a flame, then they can, they can do that too. Or, uh, for instance, if you short out the terminals or some wires right close to the battery, uh, you know, you may have heard stories of people blowing up uh, car batteries in their in their face, and you know, like they're working, and they, they short them, they short out the terminals with a wrench or, you know, some kind of tool. Uh, it does happen. I know somebody it happened to. Uh, I've shorted out the terminals many times on accident and never had mine blow up, but it can happen. But generally, it'll happen when uh, the caps are off or. They're vented caps that are, are leaking. It's being, you know, it's being charged. It usually when it's being charged or if they're maybe overcharged a little bit, it might maybe cause that condition where there's a lot of hydrogen coming out of them. But uh, anyway, that is the thing. You've got a, a volatile battery in itself with these lye polymers, lithium-ion batteries, lithium-ion. The they can be volatile if the chemicals inside get together and then they are getting in bad condition and they're swelling and what I was reading is that some of the, the swelling can cause those uh, cells to you know press against each other and then if something in, gets in the, the wrong place at the wrong time gets punctured then you get the chemical reaction in the fire 
Uh, they and, uh, and, so, and I read quite a few different things and watched mostly read stuff on that. And um, they um, lot some a lot of some people were you know it's kind of you get you got to look at both sides. It's not oh it's so dangerous don't touch him don't touch him don't touch him. And then the other were saying it doesn't happen all that much. Uh, some people were saying uh, you know. Well, if it swells so much that it, uh, you know, it's going to break your case of your phone or something, maybe you should stop using it. You know, it's <laughs> kind of that attitude about it. So, but I would just get somewhere in the middle myself. I would look at both sides and then get somewhere in the middle. Um, sometimes you get that feeling, though. Sometimes you get a feeling you should not do that. That feeling you should follow almost every time because <laughs> you usually regret it if you don't. Because it's usually the Lord telling you, watch out. Excuse me, guardian angel trying to trying to help you. <laughs> That's the way I see it. So um, anyway, uh, man, I haven't had a very a good feeling about that battery ever since it started swelling up like that. And I'm not. I'm usually kind of the one that errs on the side of being a little too. Ah, it'll be all right. Because I, you know, like. I, and luckily, I did pay attention and learn about these batteries because they are way some whole other world away more dangerous than you know even a NICAD battery or your re regular rechargeable. They were not NICADs to the rechargeable batteries that are like double AA, A, triple A's and stuff, and regular batteries. You know, some people go on saying that you know your regular alkaline batteries and all that. All they used to say how dangerous they were. When they first came out with the alkalines, oh, that's all these things can kill you, you know. <clears throat> and then uh, they used to, like you'd see, for instance, you used to see warnings, the ones before alkaline, the regular, I forgot what exact chemical they were, but you used to see warnings, never ever charge, recharge these things, they'll blow up and they'll kill you and they'll burn your house down. And when I was a kid, I was always fiddling with everything, well... I decided to try. I figured out how to do it, and I decided to try it. I had some sort of little charger, wall war. I don't know if it was either a motorcycle battery charger that showed that I had in the showed up somewhere in the garage, a six volt charger. That's what it was. I had one of those, but also just like a wall ward, You know, I used to do that. One that like the cable went bad, and so I'd cut the you know I'd strip cut the cable, strip the ends, and then use it for. A lot of things you could direct power, you know, uh, because they didn't have any of this uh, BMS in them. Anyway, I saw, I wonder if I could charge those batteries. So I used to charge my, uh, really the ones I had success with were double A's. But, of course, I had to remember to take them off and watch them and check them. I don't remember, see, I didn't have a voltmeter when I was a kid. How did I know? I guess I took them out and put them in the device and see if it would run or in a flashlight and see how bright it was. I used to do that, still do that sometimes. It's a quick way to do it, <clears throat> but uh, one time I, I remember leaving it in in there for hours, maybe even overnight, and they were so hot they would you couldn't pick them up; you'd drop them instantly, and they were starting to burst open and leak, but they didn't catch on fire. Or do any, now they might have if I left them lo long enough, but uh, so when and it was years later when I was grown when I started seeing all these alarmist people about. You know, and all these messages on the battery packages and stuff. And I'm sure somebody just blindly left them. You know, you got to use some caution. If you're going to do something that's a little risky, you still got to use some caution and use some common sense. Uh, well, or, or maybe it's not common sense. I'm learned enough to know, like, well, if you're going to put something that could possibly be leak battery acid or catch it on fire, put it in something that's not flammable or have it out on the concrete floor away from everything, you know, stuff like that. Of course, when I was charging those, I actually don't remember where I had them. I think I had them in my room, so they weren't safe. But, um, <laughs> so, I, 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 I made my guardian angel work hard to keep me safe. That's a joke. I, <laughs> it's not exactly a joke, I don't think. I think a lot of us made our, make, make our guardian angels work hard. Keep them busy. So um, that's it's true. Some people do do something that gets them harder killed, and it's not a big thing. Doesn't you know? 
you can't just can't imagine how did that end up like that. And then other people like me, sometimes not, I've, I'm not, a never have been super reckless, but there's been things that I did that could have got me killed and I was blessed and protected and I didn't get hurt, you know, but, uh, and I've been hurt before, but broke my wrist on a dirt bike one time, but, um, um, anyway, don't throw caution to the wind, but don't be, I don't, I don't, don't tell anybody else what to do, but I don't, uh, I don't go with the, what I would call the alarmist, you know, either. Try to get some knowledge and find out what you should and shouldn't do. So anyway, my, I'm don't want to use those swollen batteries and, uh, Sometimes people that don't don't know anything. It's, I, I think I remember somebody had a phone years ago with a battery swelling like crazy, and I had just started learning about how dangerous these batteries could be. And I was, I only knew the really like, seen the videos of them catching on fire and all that stuff. And I was like, man, don't use that battery. And they're like, well, I think that if I remember right, they said I took it to the Apple store, and they they tell me, well, it'll probably be all right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of course you don't. I mean, you just, most of these places like that, you just got kids that may not know a darn thing and they're giving out advice, you know? And, uh, and yeah, maybe you can get away with it for a long time, but maybe that one time or those five times out of, out of 50 are the ones that, you know, you want to pay attention to sometimes because you might be that, that one of those five. So, um, um, yeah. You know, but yeah, the, I did see videos of exactly how to do that. Uh, you know, you could take your BMS off of your battery and uh, how to wire it and everything. And then you could run your phone. Of course, then it's tethered to a cable. And so really, I mean, the wonder of these little devices is that they can run on a battery for all day, you know, all, you know, for eight to 12 hours or whatever five to 12 hours. So it seems kind of, unless you just really, I wouldn't go buying stuff. That's for sure. Now, if I could just pull the BNS chip, BMS chip off the battery and, uh, um, wire it to a, you know, USB cable and be able to plug it into a computer or the charger or whatever. And, uh, like the way I use my cameras, that one up there is most all the time is, well, now I have those 10 foot cables. So I have two 10 foot cables so I can move them around and up. They need for me to use the cameras on them. This is what I'm 98% of the time. That's all I use them for is the cameras. So they stay plugged in because they'll run down in 30, 10, 10 to 30 minutes. You know, if I'm running the camera app, so they stay plugged in and, uh, so it would be okay for them to be plugged in for running this camera. Now, the one I use for audio, I'm not talking on it right now, but the, when I do use my lapel plugged into it, if I plug it in, you get a, you get a real low buzz, low pitch buzz. And so that's not acceptable. So they th that one has to be on the battery. Uh, and I always kind of worried about me doing that, you know, leaving them on the charger 99% of the time that they're on, you know, what I do is I turn off the power or the power strip to the to the chargers every night, so they stay on the charger all day and then they're off all night. So they're not on all the time, but you get kind of back and forth reports. But I finally decided that uh, it's actually worse on them to run them way down and back up because I do know that's bad on them. run them way down and back up, way down and back up, than it is to leave them charged. Uh, people say, well, is you know. Uh, Big question on the, you know, is it uh, going to run your battery to overcharge it? Well, you really can't overcharge them as long as the BMS is working right. And they all, all these new devices have BMSs. Anything with a polymer battery, lithium ion or a light polymer battery, they all have BMSs. They can't work without them. They will catch on fire without them. They will overcharge and burn up. <clears throat> so... You can't overcharge them because of the BNS, BMS. It's going to automatically shut them down when they get full, unless it, you know, malfunctions. So um, it's. Um, I think my I worried a lot about that, but I think my worries were in vain. I don't think it, that was what I do think. The two things I think was the reason why 
what I think why battery th phone three's battery failed first one to fail. Well, they're about the age where they are getting old and about ready. About how, how long these batteries generally last, I've read up on that. But uh, <clears throat> um, one thing I did do, <clears throat> I've always kept it in this because this I would. Uh, this is how I did my wireless mic. I'd put the phone in here and uh, let the cable come out the side and put the mic on. Of course, I've got I've got these mics on right now, but they're going to that phone too over there. Um, you can see the stick to it, and that's the reason it's not in here. It's because I don't want to take that stick off because I, I'm using it. Sometimes I use it for the audio. Sometimes I use it as a camera. But anyway, phone three I would have in here, and then I would wear this around my waist. It's one of those things you wear around your waist. But I would um, zip it up. At, I would zip it up all the time when I wasn't, uh, when it was just setting up there, I would keep it zipped up because I didn't want the dust to get in, in inside of it. That was the, main, the reason. <clears throat> and then I also didn't want to pick it up and have the phone fall out. Was, you know, that could actually break the connector. Um, so this is the state that it's in. See that long adapter sticking off of there? Uh, I did have, uh, I've showed it before, but uh, it's, it's for my VR headset. There's a plastic thing. I, guess, I don't know if I can, no, I can't really, well, I can reach it, I guess. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> This, this should be a whole nother video, but I'm doing it again. I'm jabbering. Okay, so here's phone three still in that, that holder that goes from my VR headset. And so that cable would be uh, yeah, it would be sticking out one side or the other. And uh, this would support it and protect it, keep it from uh, being so easily to break. But if you drop the thing, it's just being held by a spring clamp. It's pretty good. You gotta you gotta pull and loose you know, back up you know, up in the camera again. You gotta pull it back and then lift it out of there. See and that, that spring holds it. It's pretty good. But if it hit the floor, that's gonna fall. You know, it'll just come right out of there and and, uh, and the last thing you wanna do is break your your female connector inside the phone. You that stuff is so I've had one of these apart where I got it wet and I had to take it apart to dry it. You're never going to solder that stuff, man, unless you're a pro at doing SMD parts. So, oh, I put it back in the bag. But it's just sitting up there now. But, I mean, it's it's fully functional. It just needs uh, power to it. So, um, so if I decide not to... Uh, buy batteries for it for you know, for it or them then I may uh, I might I might uh, I, I've, I got I've got one USB cable that one of the, I don't remember which end is one of the ends is you know the wires breaking inside and so one of the ends is bad if it happens to be the uh, you know the the B side would plug it that that's the one I hope is good because then if the micro side is bad I can cut it off and uh, hook it up to the BMS, and then I was actually thinking, I don't know if it'd be, if it could do it uh, safely enough. Let me grab the battery. See, I put it, I put it in the can, the old coffee can, in case it went. <laughs> of course, where it's sitting, it's sitting. If it got that hot, then it would probably the can would get so hot it might catch things around it on fire. But it's still swollen after three or four days, so the gas has not, you know, just went down. But uh, I don't think I can really show the. Maybe well, I guess you can kind of see that it's swollen there. But it's still got pressure in it. But the connectors, let's see, one, yeah, there's four connectors. There's one, one uh, it actually is marked on there. Uh, I hadn't even paid attention. I'm sure I saw it before, but yeah. Oh yeah, the first one. I don't sure you can't see that, but the first one is positive. Then you skip one. I don't think you, that'll work, but uh, but you can see the round dots. The fir first connector is uh, positive. Skip one, and the next one is negative. That's what I found out. And if I'd have really paid attention. And then the other two are to do with the sense. 
uh, that will tell the phone that there's a battery in there and all that stuff. So that's why you need the uh, BMS. That's the BMS right there. And most people just, you know, pulled it off the end of there. But I was, but then uh, they had to rig something. One guy used cardboard to hold, you know, cut out a cardboard that size and shape and it, to hold it in there. But and I, other people, like the ones that weren't even using the BMS, were just hooking the wires, the positive and negative, straight to those terminals in the phone, which is stupid. And it must have been older phones because I'm pretty sure it wouldn't work in these newer ones. But I got to thinking, well, you could, you know, open this up and get the actual battery out and keep this plastic. That's a hard plastic case. Leave the BMS in there. Get the battery out as long as you can do it safely without uh, puncturing it and catching it on fire. And uh, and then all you'd have to do is just uh, wire your USB cable into there. Uh, well, assuming... Oh, yeah, the, BM, yeah, the BMS would, would bring that voltage down from 5 volts to, you know, it would probably just stay at 4.2 or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, the maximum, you know. Okay, limited charge voltage, 4.35, but uh, it's 3.8 volts, 200 milliamps, so it's it's nominal voltage, I guess you'd say, is 3.8 volts. So that's probably a right around, it would probably be around 3.8 to 4, 4.1 or 2 volts is what the BMS would keep it regulated at. <clears throat> Got it. So, um, Yeah, I saw that working. But, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking I would do if I was going to do that. Uh, kind of hate to do that to that battery because it just works perfectly. It's just swollen, but uh, so far, anyway. Um, haven't noticed it going down fast or anything. Um, last time I was using it. Uh, oh, and the, what, I was, what I was, never did get to saying about the bag. Keeping it zipped up, that holds in the heat. So I wonder if that caused it to... Now, the reason I think it happened, I forgot about that. I don't think that would keep it too hot. I, I, I didn't shut it up all the way. I left a crack, so, you know, it wasn't completely sealed. But I thought, I, you know, it could it could have... It's not the same thing as just being... Well, in um, the phone, in the phones themselves, you know, there's, they're not, there's no air holes. There's no vents for them. I mean, the phone covers... So they're designed to be within a closed space. So I don't think that bag, it's nylon or something, you know, it's very porous. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess it's kind of like a windbreaker. It's like a windbreaker material, so. Oh, and it has. I guess it would hold in. It probably wouldn't let a lot of air go through, but I did leave the zipper open at least this much, you know, at least an inch or so. But what that particular phone was doing and I don't know why. Could have been because it was getting hot. I don't see why that would do it. But anyway, um, it would very uh, every once in a while it would uh, instead of shutting down uh, when you shut it down, you know, like I shut it off and I take off. I think it did it right. Um, instead of shutting down, it would reboot and then go into this like recovery mode uh, where you could uh, delete the cache some sort of, um, you know, cash in the system, or you could reformat, restore it, restore it to the original uh, ISO image, you know, or not ISO image, the original image, the original operating system is what I'm trying to say. It would use an image that's stored on the onboard ROM to restore it to um, the original state of the operating system. And it would be there, and then... If you and and you could use you had to use the uh, volume keys to select which one you wanted to do and then you press the button, the power button and uh, if you just pressed reboot, half the time it would just go back into that mode again. So then I realized if you plug it, it usually then would reboot normally. And that's the way it was when I found it all. And I, what I didn't say is when I found it that day a few days ago. And realized how swelled up it was. It, the, what made me even take pay attention to it? It was like that, and I rebooted it with it plugged in because, and then it just went right back into that mode. So I got it out, unplugged it, and I was like, "Man, that thing is hot! I mean, really hot! It was almost too hot to handle." 
And then I realized that daggum back is swelled up, you know. <clears throat> and so instead of going to work making working on the net pro max or whatever, I think that's what I was gonna do. Or actually I think I was gonna do that video about the Zeus unboxing of the Zeus motherboard. Instead of doing that, I spent all day messing with that battery and uh I decided to make a video about it. And um and I had to rig up to get sound, you know, uh, to my phone too and do all that stuff. That's when I ended up, I don't know if that's how I broke my streaming capabilities, uh, adding that audio to Kim too, or if it just happened to be a coincidence. And, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, fell around. I think I ended up two days messing around with OBS Studio and <laughs> all that stuff. And I still can't stream yet. I have still haven't fixed that because I wanted to finish my server and get it out of my room so I don't have that noise and heat in here. But uh, anyway, uh, this morning I did did some of that research while I was waiting for yesterday's videos to upload and getting woke up and everything, get work, think straight. And um, so, I, I, you know, I... I see a way to not have to spend money and still be have, be able to use the phones, and and the thing is, if I was if I was going to end up, it looks to me like it wouldn't be long before I have to buy three batteries. Well, that's let's say I you know let's just say I went in and bought the batteries at sixteen dollars each, then yeah I can't do wait what's that thirty I guess I can so thirty forty six forty seven forty eight dollars so that's fifty bucks. Uh, and then what you know, uh, so that's 50 bucks right off the bat. And I've been wanting a, a, a real camera, a better camera. Well, that's 50 bucks is enough to buy a nice webcam. Actually, I think you can get it. I don't know if it's, I was looking at one I almost thought about getting that was, I don't know if it was 4K or 1080p that was about 50 bucks. Seems like it would only be 1080p. But, uh, because of my problem with the audio video sync, you know, trying streaming. Two cameras over the Wi-Fi and audio over the Wi-Fi. It's just, I don't think it's the, again, I don't think it's the routers. They do over several hours of time, they do need to be rebooted, but I don't think it's the routers. Um, I think it's more the phones, chip, Wi-Fi chips. So they're never going to be any better than that. So I thought about buying a camera with Wi-Fi streaming, but I think I'll have the same problem. Um so um, I got I, I've I thought about getting a USB camera like a webcam, you know, because uh, they'll do at least four. Well, I've got USB two. I don't have USB three, so they would do at least like 400, 450, you know, megabits per second. Um, <clears throat> and um, that's way more than uh, you know. These phones range anywhere. The most I've ever seen them do is about 75, and they generally run between 15 and 35, 50 maybe, uh, on the Wi-Fi when you check the speed on them. So, And it it's fluctuates all the time with these phones. I've noticed that. And I don't think it's the phones. I think it's just, i said this over and over, the Wi-Fi signals. I think it's the interference from other, not just other neighbors' Wi-Fi, but uh, just all the multitude of radio signals in the air these days. I think that's what it is. But um, so I thought about going wired with USB, but you really can't get very far away with that. Ten foot would probably be these cables that I have. That'd probably be the max I could do. Well, these won't work on one of those. I'd have to have the regular USB cable. But with these small cables, they're not going to carry. I don't think they would do anywhere near. They might be do a hundred megabits. Someone guess two hundred, maybe, maybe, at ten foot. You know. And I'd probably have to buy another cable, too, a longer cable. The one that comes with it, it's probably going to be this long now. It'd probably be about that long. You know. So what the thing is, is my computer's over there. So I need 10-foot minimum to get around here behind me to point that webcam at the, uh, at the monitor. And that's the main thing I want. Is to I would like to have something that... Uh, well, I want something with optical zoom because the webcam's not going to have optical zoom, most not anything in a fifty-dollar range anyway. And so you're still going to have the same problem I have with the phones. You're not going to you're not going to be able when you do the digital zoom, it's going to be all blurry and grainy. So you won't still won't be able to read the screen. I'd like to have it to where I can point a camera at the screen, and when I reboot the machine I'm working on and show it like I've been doing, then you'll be able to read or at least see 
fairly clearly, you know, what's on. I mean, if it's real small text, you may not be able to read it, but you get as good as I can. You know, I see how lots of people doing, you know, I'm sure they have 4K cameras, real cameras. And, <clears throat> you know, you can read it perfectly, everything they show at the screen, as long as they get a good angle at it and everything. They don't even bother with remote desktop. Uh, a lot of them, they just use their camera. But, um, and it's just, you know, I just, it's just too expensive to buy a, uh, you can get 4K cameras for, let's see, what did I see? We can get 1080Ps for 150, 200, which would be fine, but again, if you spend that much money, it might be better to go ahead and go up to a 4K, you know, I guess a low-end 4K, but. Uh, but then with a regular camera like a DSLR or something like that, they may have, some of them have, a lot of them just have like Wi-Fi, like downloading and stuff from the camera. They don't have Wi-Fi streaming. Some of them do. Well, the ones that have Wi-Fi streaming are probably not going to be a DSLR with, you know, like a good one with interchangeable lenses and stuff. Anyway, I looked and looked and looked and now I, my mind's a jumbled with all the cameras I looked at, but. I really would like to have something with an optical zoom. I, I kept thinking for years that, well, a cool way to do the kind of video I'm doing is to have surveillance cameras. Uh, and at first I thought Wi-Fi would be the thing, but now I don't think so. I think you need wired. And that would actually be good because now they've come down, you can get four day, you can get like, a, 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 you can get for like $150, $175, you could get four um, 1080, well, 1080p cameras, probably not 4K, you spend more for 4K. Uh, well, the, the one I saw the other day at Fry, I, I had never, I don't, I don't you look at Fry's real often, but I saw one at Fry that was on sale at Fry's and that was a pretty good deal when they were all sold out, but it was like $160 for four cameras and a, you know, VTR. And, uh, only thing it had a, v, it had an ethernet K, uh, out, but I didn't, they didn't have any specs there and it was sold out anyway. So I didn't look into it, but, uh, some of them, the Ethernet is only for remote control. It is not for live streaming. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> you might be better off just buying a uh, buying a camera that is set up to that you buy you can buy them one at a time. You know that'll plug into your router. Is what I'm trying to say. There's some that those, those uh, IP cameras. You know that'll and they're they're made for surveillance. They advertise them as surveillance cameras, but you can just plug them into your router. And most of them have power over Ethernet. And I almost bought a router with power over Ethernet. And then I decided, well, the extra expense is silly right now because I don't have anything that can use that. But uh, but anyway, you would need, if you're going to, I mean, you don't have to have that kind of camera, but that really is a convenient way to do it, the one that used PoE. Uh, and I just whichever way, you know, like here in my room, I can just plug them in somewhere. I've got power behind me. I got power, you know, all around me. So, but anyway, if I had, if I had two of them and then use, and like I say right now, I've got two phones that are working fine. Either one of them could be the audio. Uh, I still probably going to have, uh, you know, sync problems, but it would be much better. I'm sure. Cause the audio coming from the phone all by itself doesn't delay much at all. It's, not exactly the same as the SM58. It's probably delayed a little bit more than the SM58, but you do have adjustments. You can adjust it in OBS Studio. Uh, but the more I the more I fix it, the worse it gets with uh, with the wi the way the Wi-Fi is fluctuates so much here, streaming the audio and the video. But if I was wired for video and streaming only audio. And I'll tell you what, a, camera, a phone and a lapel makes an ideal lapel mic uh, because you can, I've gone five hours easy and and still not anywhere, you know, not running down my battery. Like today, uh, I probably have gone five hours and uh, I don't know, well, I can't, oh, yes, I can. Let's see, I have to wake it up. I just want to see my battery. I'm at 68%. And uh, I think I started 11 or 12 today, and it's, well, look how many hours, it's 9.36 p.m. 
I don't know exactly when I started streaming. It was somewhere, let's just say it was around noon. And I started not streaming, but making videos. And, uh, well, this thing hasn't been off since then. I rebooted it, but I didn't turn it off. So that's way more than five hours. I've probably gotten eight or nine hours out of it. And it's still not down. You know, it's still got plenty of time left. And uh, now I'm not actually talking on it. I've only talked on it for maybe, you know, through two minutes here and there today. I only used it a couple of times. I always have it on and ready so that all I have to do is hit Control 4 to mute the SM58 and Control 2 to activate that mic. And uh, so it's a wonderful way because you're never going to get... Uh, if you buy a real cheap uh, wireless mic, you're probably gonna get 30 minutes out of it, out of the batteries, and you got to change them. And they probably, unless you use, if you use rechargeable batteries, and you probably get about 20 minutes maybe out of them, maybe 15 minutes, because they just don't last as long as a out regular alkaline battery. Batteries are too expensive to keep changing them every 30 minutes to an hour. You know, even if you get and a lot of them will get an hour. Like if you spend, well, it depends, I don't know how much you spend is not. You know, there's like the bottom tier, the medium tier, and then the upper tier, and then the way up there tier of, you know, products. So if you get like the second from the bottom tier is what I'm saying, uh, you're probably going to get about an hour out of your uh, wireless mics and uh, before you have to change the battery. So uh, some of them, I think these days, some of those cheap old karaoke mics might come with rechargeable batteries. So... When you're new, you might, I don't know what you'll get out of them, maybe an hour, let's say, and then after a few months or a year, they're going to go down about half of that, you know. Then you're going to be in the same shape I'm in right now with my phone batteries. Some of them you can't even, some things you have to hack them and, you know, uh, open them up and solder, you know, desolder and resolder a new battery in them. <coughs> so uh, <clears throat> you might not be wanting to do that. <clears throat> um, but... Uh, Anyway, yeah, I can either just buy, uh, I would rather just buy another camera than spend and, you know, spend all, send, keep spending money on stuff for these phones when they're not that uh, ideal, you know, for making videos. So, uh, the other thing is, is when I go outside in the garage, well, I can't really handle any, but the la last summer I was out there, uh, you know, when I, it's really strange. Usually when I, I don't know why, maybe it's got, what it's got to do with, but for years now, when I do start feeling better enough to like go out and do physical work, it's usually in the hottest part of the year. And for some reason, if I, uh, usually what I do is I start out getting up early as I can and go out there in the early morning so that it's only 80 degrees or something, you know, some days it's even 75 or something early, really early in the morning, about, you know, before sun up, and then it gets hotter and hotter, but I was out there several, quite a few days last summer, not, is it this summer, or the one, I think it was the one before, no, I guess it was this summer, I was out there in the garage, and I wasn't out in the sun, but I was in the garage, or like under the shade, just out of the garage, working on some stuff, and, uh, it was 103, and I was end up staying out a little longer till two and three and four, and then it was five, you know, before I would come in. I remember one day I was out there, I was out there, and I checked the temperature it was 111. And the reason I realized I better check the temperature, and I have fans going and everything, but it's just like a heater blowing on you, is because the phone locked up and shut itself. It didn't, it didn't lock up; it shut itself down. I was trying to make videos of what I was doing. And it had got too hot for the phone. <laughs> so at somewhere between, I kept checking the temperature every, you know, hour or two. Somewhere between like 103 and 111, the phone shut down. I didn't know when it shut down. <laughs> and uh, so um, these phones can't handle, uh, you know, high heat. And, I'm, they, and I know they can't handle, you know, they, they, they don't have a very, if you look at what they're rated at temperature wise, they're not rated at real low temperatures or real high temperatures. So if you're wanting to be working out in the garage in the, in the driveway or in the car, or in whatever, you know, woodwork, whatever it is you're wanting to show, um, you need, you, you need a camera. Uh, surveillance cameras will be ideal for that sort of thing. Only thing is they don't have zoom. Well, some of them have zoom, but those are real expensive ones, but they're still going to be digital zoom. But, uh, I, don't, I like, I love being able to, 
have to, you know, two or more. I, I could have three cameras with those three phones, but um, it's actually that's just over the limit for the Wi-Fi I can handle. You know that then then there's just nothing's in sync. So I always have done two phones and one audio mic. You know, mic on one phone, and uh, usually starts out okay. Well, not used to lately. The last six months or more just been crazy i just think there's just more interference but um anyway um used to you could get a good hour out of them or two even before they would start getting out of sync so bad and but now it's just random but um in here it's great and i can just um you know grab the mouse and switch to the other phone to show the, uh, the the other camera to show other different views or i can show you know both of them together and because uh, you just can't work, you got to have two hands. You got to be, and you can't just think about the camera shut all the time. Uh, and that keeps you from. I mean, otherwise you would spend three times as much. If you have one camera, let's say you have a camera and a lapel mic, maybe it's wireless and that's great. Uh, or you could have a lapel mic that's plugged in the camera, and then you're tethered to your camera. Um, but then you've got to keep removing that camera. And if you're doing live streams, and of course everybody's going to see that mo all that moving, and all, and sometimes when I do have to move a, a phone, and you know, it's always end up being terrible video. I try to avoid doing that, but sometimes you have to. But anyway, if you're using one camera, or like a say a good camera, uh, if you are doing a live stream, of course not all cameras can do live, but if you had one that was going to do that, which is what I like to do, then you're going to have a lot more time of moving that camera around and everything and a lot more bad video so um that's why i like the idea of having like say the surveillance cameras but the only thing is there's one thing that i do a lot and that's i need to show my monitor because i do a lot i'm always doing you know videos about computer stuff and software and everything and i'm always um always having to reboot a machine or show a machine that's not set up with you know remote desktop yet and so um, I'm leaning more and more towards getting a camera that either can either um, with those with an optical zoom that can either send over Wi-Fi or um, which I'm really not to you know uh, enthusiastic about because I, you know, I don't think it's going to be any better than these phones and, and about the lag and all that, or uh, USB. And there's not, I don't think I ever saw any real camera, what I call a real camera, you know, something like a DSLR or a camcorder, either one, uh, that has a USB that sends video out. You know, maybe you send the, the files out to the computer. That's pretty, they'll do that, but send live video out. I haven't seen any that uh, would do it over USB. All I saw was webcams. And I, I don't remember seeing any webcam. I've seen webcams with Zoom, but not optical Zoom. And so without optical Zoom, you're not going to be able to even be that far. See, that's only a, well, a six to eight feet, about six feet from my monitor. Uh, and, and, you know, unless you had like an expensive camera with optic the digital zoom it might work that far away but okay phones and stuff like that now that's eight meg megapixel on that tablet these are five megapixel neither one of them will zoom in and not be so grainy and that you can't read it you know so um of course a real camera with an optical zoom a good camera uh, i like canons a lot uh and uh, oh, as long as I'm jabbering, I guess I'll just, I don't know why I'm jabbering so much. <laughs> this video needs to be divided into two videos. <clears throat> um, I was looking earlier today at one that would could be good, could be really good, but and it's not too bad of a price, let me see, except for one killer for it. Well, sort of. Um, Gotta wait for this to open up. Let's see, I can close that one. I don't need that other. Yeah, see, this is a quad core with 4 gig of RAM, and that's how long it takes for uh, 
Firefox to open up two and with two tabs. Let's see. Okay, so uh, oh, I remember. There we go. Yeah, there that stopped right on the camera, but I was talking about. Uh, but let's see, where is it? Yeah, here it is. This would be a uh, pretty good. This would be pretty cool. I did that all on its own. Sometimes if you if you save your bookmark with it down there, that's where it wants to go. It takes you back there. This is a Canon. Um, is this a whole kit? All this comes with it, which is pretty cool since I don't have any you know DSLR equipment or anything. Those I don't think those little tripods are very good, but I don't. I've got two little small tripods. I'm trying to get it to go back to the normal picture. Okay, so anyway, that seems to be the best price I've seen on it because it's 250 everywhere else for just the camera and none of that other stuff. Um, and uh, but the thing is, uh, now it's it's not you know it's a 16 megapixel, so it's a little bit older model, I believe. Um, but it has 50 50x optical zoom. And I'm not one to remember all the, the lens sizes and everything, but that's pretty good. I don't think, yeah, that lens doesn't come off. So that's not a real uh, DS, well, it's a, I guess it's a DSLR, digital SLR, but it's not the ones where you can swap the lenses out. But that's fine for me. I mean, I do actually have a Sony lens that off a of video camera. That, but I've just learned the other day there's the, the formats, what do they call them? One third and okay, one. No, that's not it. They call them one third uh, lenses and you know, one, two third. I don't remember. I just remember one third. But anyway, the uh, size uh, and, and everything and, and the connection on the back of the lens. Let's see, yeah, you're not going to see a lens off of there because it's not that kind. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> It finally hit me how they how you tell, <laughs> and uh, so if I bought a camera that used that kind of type of lens, then I could uh, doesn't have to be a Sony. Then I could use that lens as a pretty good lens, but uh, but that's not a big deal. Fifty uh, X optical is just plenty for me, and uh, and even even though I couldn't swap the lens out, I'm not that. Uh, I don't. I don't have that need, you know, to do all that. I used when I used to run around and drive around and take pictures everywhere I went with my friend that's a photographer. I always die. I would have died for a camera like that with, you know, a, well he liked Nikon's and he used, you know, interchange. Well he had he had film cameras, and and then digital cameras came out and he started to get it into digital cameras. But uh, and he had everything from point and shoots to those Nikon's, and uh, he'd get rid of one and then get another one and stuff. And, and, uh, but he had, uh, he used some DSLRs too, but, but the lenses that he already had would go onto those, you see, from the ones that he had, the, the, one, the better ones. But, uh, yeah, see, these are just the, these are kind of the intermediate ones. They, uh, oh, there's some more kits. What's this one? That's a Canon. Oh, that's the same one. That's actually a cheaper for the same one. I didn't notice that. <clears throat> um, I don't know if it was like that before, but uh, I think it's the same kit. Ritz. He used to work for Ritz Camera. Ritz Gear Bag. He used to work for Ritz Camera for many years uh, in the photo lab. But um, yeah, that's actually the more expensive one of those. Oh, and there's one that's two forty nine. Same thing, yeah. But the one drawback for me that I always wanted in a good have a good camera, but also have um, uh, ability to plug in uh, an external mic. Now there's one that's uh, 20 megapixels. That's a different model. Oh, I wonder if that one does that. That's actually cheap. Yeah, I I don't know. If I just didn't notice or what, but uh, yeah, those are this. That's the same camera, all except for that one. Let's see. 
I don't know if maybe it doesn't have free shipping or something. What's the deal with that one? It does have free shipping. Well, I have to put that in my little cameras research. I think I just saw saw the uh, folder and missed it. So I already know what this one is. But that's kind of neat. Uh, Ritz, uh, I kind of like that it's a Ritz camera bag, actually. Okay, now that one. Well, it doesn't matter. Those are all the same camera. I mean, the same. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, same camera. This is a PowerShot SX420. 20, 20 megapixel. That's good. With It's a whole kit. And, oh, it's marked down. That's why. Mark down right now. Evidently, it's been a few weeks since I did a bunch of research on them. Uh, it has built-in Wi-Fi, but it's probably not. Oh, 720p HD video. That's an older model. Then, see that other one is a 1080p, I believe. So that's that uh so that that kills it right there. That's not enough. I mean, that's what I'm using right now and that's not really enough. Uh although it may be all you could stream over the Wi-Fi if it, I'm sure it doesn't do Wi-Fi streaming but oh audio's not going. I was going to look and see if it has Yeah, it doesn't have an external mic either. I don't Oh, it says it does. Oh, yes, it does have a mic and speaker. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a mic, external mic connection. So this one was, was the one I was looking at um, a minute ago. Same, let's see, I think this one is a 1080p, should be, unless it's not. SX53, oh, it's a different model. SX53HS. Oh, no, it's the same one. Okay, so pretty sure it's going to have yeah, 1080p HD video. Got to watch that too because sometimes there's a well, you should, I mean, with a Canon or, you know, a Sony or something like that, it should be what they say. But well, when you look at those Chinese cameras, they'll advertise 1080p. And then there's a way to fake it in software, basically. And that's, I forget what they call it, but bit banging, I think they call it. Um, and so they'll say it's, you know, 1080p or 4K. And then when you read the specs, it's like, you can see even even without knowing every little thing you read the specs and you see that it says basically the real hardware has so and so and it is not 1080p you know or it is not 4k <laughs> and even some of them even put the word in there bit banging and some of them use some other words that sounds nicer you know <coughs> but uh, i just happened to accidentally run across that about bit banging i like to read about software software hacks hardware hacks you know a lot and so um, let's see so I accidentally came across that yeah but there's no uh, no no the word mic is not in there and so I found it in the questions on one I don't know actually that one that was at Walmart that's why I saved it it they said does this thing have an external mic connection and someone answered back no it does not so but they did say it, but it does have good audio. You know, sounds good. So, since I do my audio on uh, going straight to my computer most of the time on the SM58, that could still work for me and have a pretty darn good camera. Because um, Canon's, when you w I watched a bunch of videos a couple week or two ago about what what would be the best DSLR to get, you know, and, it, and I saw the ones between this. To the ones with the interchangeable lenses and on up to the next, on up to the red cameras. You know, those are real expensive 4K cameras and stuff. Professional quality cameras. And uh, anyway, um, since I do 
OBS streaming, then I I would be using my mic anyway, going straight to the computer. Now, what I would happen with my syncing, I don't know. Oh, but I don't think. Oh, this one doesn't do Wi-Fi, so I, this one wouldn't work at all because uh, it doesn't do Wi-Fi. USB multifunction, yeah. So no, this one wouldn't work. There are some of these types of cameras that do Wi-Fi, and uh, I thought I saw one that did. Well, that one says that there's a, the Wi-Fi interface is effortless once you get it set up. It must be talking about a different camera. That happens in these Amazon reviews because it's not anywhere in the specs. So. Um, I don't know if any of them. There's one. So there's a Canon. I'm just doing Canon because it's one of the ones I like. Uh, a Canon EOS Rebel. This one might be... I don't think it is an interchangeable lens. It might be. I'm not sure. Just by looking at it, I can't tell. But it's $600. Um... And it should have both, yeah, oh, Wi-Fi, built-in Wi-Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth technology. Now, I think near NFC is near-field communication. And I was just reading, actually ran across a project and I, the other day. Um, let's see. I think I saved it right in here. No, I guess I didn't. Uh, a Raspberry Pi. I have a Raspberry Pi B. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is it. I think this is the uh, project, the actual software page right here. Easy Wi-Fi broadcast. Okay, so it takes... You set up... What you're doing is you're setting up... Uh, you have to have more than just your Raspberry Pi. you got to have a camera, of course. Why well, Raspberry Pi camera? And there are 8 megapixels. Uh, well, they might have a newer one for the Raspberry Pi uh, 3 or whatever that's a little better than that. But uh, I was trying to see just quickly... But you can use your router. You can well. You don't use your router. You use, uh, but it's going on 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth. But it, um, I thought it would tell more about it in there. Let's see. That might be the one. Might not even be the one I was looking for. Let's see if this is it. I think that's part of the software you need to use to do it. They were doing it for a drone, but uh, I don't want to do a drone. I just want to do between the Wi-Fi and anyway. You need to get you a, a yeah bidirectional later link between two endpoints established using Wi-Fi hardware and custom protocol. This is the software. Drone Bridge is optimized for use in UAV application as a complete system, uh, but you could just use it. You don't have to use it on a drone. You could use it on a Wi-Fi and a Wi-Fi, uh, USB to plug into your computer is what you could do. Of course, then you're not going to get more than whatever your USB can do, but I think 400, 450 would be enough for what I need to do. But anyway, um, it's uh, you, you install the software on your Raspberry Pi. It's, an, it's a Raspberry Pi operating system. And then you've got to put, uh, you, I think you have to flash the firmware on the, your uh USB, uh, your <clears throat> on your USB uh, Wi-Fi dongle that you plug into your computer. Uh, anyway, it's supposed to work. You can do HD video. You can, this you can actually do uh, remote control, telemetry, all this stuff for your drone. But I don't like I said I'm going to be doing the drone. It's, he says you can do 1080p video, and it's a proven project. It's been used, you know, and. Uh, this is really, really interesting. And there's a drone bridge for Android so you control your, your drone with it, you know, and all that stuff. There's a little 
Um, let's see. There's a couple of different ways to do it. What's this? Draw ESP32. That's a Wi Fi. Uh, that's actually what you probably want to use, not just a regular uh, Wi Fi dongle. That's a board you can buy. Yeah. Uh, uh, wireless bo uh, board you can buy. <coughs> I think that's, yeah, it's more for the telemetry for the drone, I think. But, uh, so, you, the wife, yeah, the wife, the, the pie with the drone bridge, uh, drone bridge operating system on it. Uh, supported network adapter, you have to get, like I said, get a supported network adapter. So, whichever one that you can, you know, you have to make sure and get one of those. Uh, you might be able to. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to, I haven't completely researched it all, but uh, UAV ground station. Let's see. HDMI out. Oh, you got to have two pods. I forgot about that. You got to have one to send and one to receive. Well, it actually goes both ways. Data goes both ways. But uh, so this would be your wireless, and then this would be the one that's going to take it into your your local network and to your. Uh, I guess I was thinking I would plug a Wi-Fi dongle into my computer and go straight to the computer. But you might have to go ahead and go through your router. But anyway, especially if to do oh, oh, Raspberry um, OBS Studio, I might have to do, go through my router. Anyway, I'd have to look into it. Uh, it's been a while since, a couple of weeks, or three or four since I've looked at this. But uh, let's see if the... Uh, yeah, here's the article where I found it on Hackaday. Yeah, I think there's video and telemetry link uses standard Wi-Fi hardware. That's what I was trying to say. See, they put it in a little, they put it in a, looks like a plug box. <clears throat> or I think, no, actually, I think they 3 printed that thing, but it was just like a plug box. You might as well buy a plug box. You know how expensive that would be to, to print that? Even if you, just to say you already had a 3D printer, just the, Plastic, you know, that uh, uh, I forgot what you call that stuff. And that would be a lot of time and a lot of money in that stuff, and you could just buy that for a dollar and a half. But anyway, it's fun to do that. If you could do it, you know, if I could do it, I'd probably do it. Print it exactly the size I wanted if I had that equipment. Uh, anyway, you can look at that article if you want to see more about it. Oh, somebody says anybody, like the newer Raspberry Pis have built-in Wi-Fi. I don't know. Well, there's a couple of projects, others. But uh, anyway, that is something. What I was, what it got me to thinking is I could put that operating system. I think it will run on my Raspberry Pi uh, B. I believe it will. And... Uh, I think I already saw that it would. I wanted the versions of it or whatever. And then instead of using Wi-Fi, I'd just use a, an Ethernet cable straight to my router. So then it's going to be, the software will already send out. I'm pretty sure it uses a VLC stream for the video. And uh, that's what I receive. That's what my OBS Studio receives. If it doesn't, then I should be able to install VLC and, and just start a VLC stream. Actually, I could do it without this software. I could just use whichever Raspberry Pi operating system I want to with the wired Ethernet connection. Mine doesn't have Wi-Fi. I'd have, you know, I just has a wired Ethernet connector. And uh, I might not really need this operating system. I could use whatever I want because all I really need is VLC. And since uh, this my Pi is only 750 megahertz and uh, 512 megabyte of RAM, I'd probably run VLC on I've seen lots of projects how to run VLC server, video server, uh, <clears throat> with the Pi camera. Um, in the in, uh, in terminal version, you know, not the graphic version, so it doesn't use a lot of resources and it works. I, it's when you move, you pick it up and move it around, you get a lot of you know like blurriness and ghosting, so. 
As long as you, I think as long as you were sitting still, it might be okay. The reason I haven't done it because you have to spend 25 bucks for the camera just to try that. Uh, maybe plus shipping, you know. Um, that's why I haven't ever done it yet because I just thought, well, especially when I had these phones for 15 bucks, you know, I, that's why I didn't do it. But uh, uh, if it would bring up the quality enough, I'm kind of thinking it might not. But it won't be streaming since it wouldn't be streaming over the Wi-Fi. Actually, either I would do this project with this the whole thing, or I would just first I would just try uh, going straight through the Ethernet cable, and that would get that's 100 megabits. So realistically, you get 90, 95 megabits out of that. That should be enough for 720. I'd still do 720p like I'm doing now because because of the machine and also because of uh, my. Uh, to fit to, to be able to have two cameras I don't have the other camera on uh, two two is doing audio but you know to the way I have it all set up if you had a 1080p then you know they wouldn't fit side by side is what I'm trying to say so um, but I mean not that I couldn't redo new profiles new scenes but uh, yeah this one I don't think I ever did I ever see if it had that one doesn't have does it have Wi-Fi I don't think it does. I thought it did. But, oh yeah, it has Wi-Fi, but I don't think it, uh, suddenly dying never breaks like crazy. Oh yeah, it, NFC, that's what got me thinking about it. So I think this NFC is what I was talking about. I think that's the same thing. So that's a, uh, a cheaper way to do this. <laughs> um, I think this might actually stream. Most of them don't, yeah. Four third cameras. That's the way they measure the uh, lens. Oh, mainstream. He's talking about. He's not talking about streaming. So I don't know if that camera will do it or not. Anyway, uh, if you're gonna, there is a, a, a found. I didn't even know that until that until I saw that project. There is a protocol. It's supposed to be pretty darn expensive, and I'm not sure that even get it in a six hundred dollar camera. A, a specialized wireless protocol for streaming video that, well, I always knew they had it because, you know, TV news and everybody else has been using it forever. But uh, there is cameras you can buy that will do that. But uh, you probably have to have a camera that brought, you know, sent broadcast and then receiver to plug into your computer. And so you're going to be spending some money one way, you know. So, uh, I've been needing to quit for a while, and now I got no choice. So I'm going to go, and it doesn't even matter what else I might want to say. <laughs> uh, so I'll be back later and get back to work on the computers again. Not tonight, uh, tomorrow, whatever. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.